the comic multiverse where the worlds of nerd meet. As always, I'm your host, Joel, and joining me is Matt, everybody. We're back again after taking a week off last week to do Retro Hero videos, so we got tons of news to catch up on for you. We got a lot of news, and it's going to be, and whenever we get this much news, we, we think there's not going to be a lot to talk about. It ends up being a two and a half hour show. Yeah, really. Thank you, everyone who is supporting Retro Hero video. It didn't get as many views as the first episode did. Maybe that's because of the episode we chose to talk about. I'm not sure. But the comments have all been overwhelmingly positive. So I appreciate, you know, everyone out there supporting me and Matt trying different things at the end of every month. Yeah, thank you, everyone. It's really fun doing it as well. It is. It's nice. It's a nice break for you because you run the back end of mm -hmm. all of this. I actually take point on that one, which means I'm actually able to turn it around quicker <laughs> than I think because we don't end up doing a three-hour epic. Yep. Still not to say we couldn't do a three-hour epic. We'll eventually have to do some of those animated <clears throat> movies, so that'll be longer than 40 minutes, no doubt. Yeah, and, and I'm sure there'll be some arcs that we do, do eventually that will require us to talk at length about what's mm. in them and everything. When we eventually do a two-parter, we'll have to do both parts in one because they're telling one story. Yeah. Uh, so how's your week been, Matt? Not too bad, not too bad. Just before the show came, I, I got a, a delivery of Gundams. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm looking forward to building up them. Uh, apart from that, I've been playing some some of the PlayStation 5 version of Uncharted 4. I Lost saw Legacy. that. It looks very pretty. <clears throat> oh, it's so good. It looks so damn good. You know, I still haven't played a lot of those. I played one and two and never played any of the other Uncharted's, and I feel oh, like I should. you got to play three and four. Three and four are uh, easily the best, technically. Yeah, as I look and see, I'm like, man, am I just missing something? Lord Lord knows I got time to go back and complete and catch up on uh, all of those uh, games now as I wait for the PS5 that may never come. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I've been up to. Uh, you and I have both actually been playing that new Pokemon Legends Arceus, too, there. You weren't sure if you were going to get it. I knew I was going <clears> to <throat> get it. Yeah, I was kind of on the fence because fucking February is a huge month for games. I got the yeah, new Horizon Forbidden Wilds and Elden Ring and all that coming out. Uh, and I wasn't sure whether I was going to get it, but I thought, ah, stuff would fucking play a Pokemon game for once. Got to gotta do something on the Switch there. I'm really enjoying it. I'm further along... Uh, than you i've uh taken down the second noble frenzied pokemon lore whatever you want to call it because this is a prequel so we don't got gyms no more we got these <laughs> things as kind of like the big uh what is it like chapter uh conclusions uh yeah. in your big story yeah i i've been i've seen some of the bosses in uh videos and stuff and they all look really cool they do, and you actually have to do a lot of Dark Souls dodging. I never mm -hmm. thought freaking Dark Souls dodging would make it into Pokemon, <laughs> but here we are. It, it's really weird. Like, I, it kind of surprised me as well how uh, when you start the Pokemon battle, like you, your character, you can like run around the field. Because yep. I'm so oh, used yeah. to it just being static, like stationary. Like, yeah. Like in the Game Boy games, where it's literally you just watching the Pokemon fight. You can mess yourself up too if you're standing too close to a big <laughs> AOE attack. You will get hurt. Yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty cool. It is pretty cool, actually. What, what kind of, you know, grinds my gears is later on, trainers will start throwing multiple Pokemon out at you. And I'm like, oh, cool, we're having a double battle. What do you mean I can't throw out another Pokemon now? <laughs> oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. And in the wild, if you end up walking through one of those space rifts, you'll actually get jumped by, like, three Pokemon at once. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the game actually is much more difficult and challenging. You really got to, you know, work <laughs> your uh, agile style and your strong style to get through. I never thought a Pokemon <clears throat> game could be challenging, and yet here we are. Yeah, that's cool. It's also funny, too, because uh, obviously people said, oh, you know, there's a lot of Breath of the Wild in here. And there is, <clears throat> but there's also a lot of Monster Hunter, too, where you mm -hmm. keep going back to the same areas over and over again because you want to up your star ranking because only by upping your star ranking do you get higher level pokemon to listen to you yeah yeah which is always my thing where i would always breeze through all the gyms as quickly as i could in the other games because i wanted to be able to catch whatever i wanted to catch yeah yeah now what what pokemon did you start with uh typhlosion of course because <laughs> i am I, I i'm a gold boy you know gold was my first i have many great memories of cyndaquil and quillava so i had to pick him even though I know his final evolution isn't the most impressive because he gets a new regional variant. Nice. I picked uh, Rowlet. 
Nice, 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 nice. Yeah. The Owl Archer. Yeah, yeah. Because I usually like whenever I played Pokemon games, I usually either go with the Fire type or the Water type. Mm -hmm. Never do yep. like a Grass Flying sort of thing. So I thought, eh, yeah, yeah. stuff it. Just try something different. Here's the thing too. There's <clears throat> you're way more open to pick a starter in this one than you have been in any other. Because normally, you know, if you want to pick it on easy mode, you pick the one that's strongest against the first gym. Yeah, yeah. But that's not really a thing in this one. And also, too, thank God. In the post game, you can actually <clears throat> catch all the other starters. Finally, yeah. this game is way more open about not gating certain Pokemon behind trading, which I yeah. freaking love. I, I I heard about that when I first started a game, which made my choice a little bit easier. I'm like, I'll just catch the other ones later on. And you can get the other Diamond and Pearl starters later on too, because apparently <clears throat> they're much more abundant than they are in the future. Nice, nice. We were also joking before the game start or before we started the show too. Uh, this Pokemon game has a lot to say about God because you're literally <laughs> on a mission from God. Yeah, because God decides to throw you back through time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God is real and a Pokemon and <clears throat> has a mission for you. You you are the Blues Brothers. You are on a mission from God. <laughs> It gets even crazier because you meet the Diamond and Pearl clan and they all have their own ideas about God and how to properly worship him and they all think the other one is doing it wrong. And I'm like, oh my God, is this a Pokemon game about theology? <laughs> is this going to be Pokemon Holy Wars, Pokemon <laughs> Spanish Inquisition? <laughs> is this game going to get really dark by the end? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we must cleanse the unbelievers in Charizard fire. It's the <laughs> only way. Charizard fire. I slayed millions of Badoofs in the name of our Lord, Arceus Christ. <laughs> the, the, the Badoof Holocaust. <laughs> Deus Vault, Deus Vault. <laughs> and on that note, everyone, <laughs> uh, I guess we'll hop into the news for this week, because like I said, we have a big, big old list of it, because we got a couple weeks worth of news all saved up. Yeah. So I guess the biggest piece of news from last week is the Moon Knight trailer finally dropped for the <clears> Disney <throat> Plus show, and oh boy. Yeah, it looks cool, eh? It really, really does. I didn't know what to expect for this one. I am so happy to see them uh, leaning into the whole psychodrama that is the world of Moon Knight. Yeah, he we see all his, uh, or most of his uh, split personalities on, yeah. on hand here, and uh, Oscar Isaac doing... A, a very poor uh, British accent, which is part of the character, because Steve, oh, really? yeah, Steve Grant is is British, but Steve Grant isn't the real Mark Spector, so it's like a fake British accent. It like kind of goes into that. the whole character where that's not I really wondered, him. Yeah, I wondered about that because the whole conceit of the show basically <clears> is <throat> saying, hey what if batman didn't know he was batman what if mm -hmm. a superhero led a whole superhero life and didn't even know about it or i'm like oh that's that's an interesting you know idea for a tv show yeah yeah because like in most moon knight stories he's well aware of his split personalities hell they even talk to each other a lot of the time but here it seems that moon knight's big mystery to unravel is himself yeah yeah he he's not sure uh about like like he's got he seems to have some sort of insomnia where like he'll wake yeah. up in places where he doesn't remember being and stuff like that and yeah it looks like really cool you get to see Konshu a little bit there yeah yeah we certainly did we get the mystery villain uh in this one too played by uh oh Ethan why Hulk. am i missing ethan hawk yeah who we still don't know who ethan hawk is playing but he looks to be some sort of like new age hippie cult leader maybe yeah it looks really cool he's playing jared leto that's who he's playing he's fucking pl oh my god is he ever fucking <laughs> playing jared leto moon knight gets like a transformation scene like something out of like sentai or sailor moon where like bandages come around him and everything and i'm like oh they're really selling the mummy part of him too yeah it looks great when it uh comes on there. it's not just like a costume he can just take off and on and hang up somewhere like a living thing it's part of him which i'm imagining because it was given to him by a god so yeah yeah i also wonder how the show will draw the line on conchu as a god are they like no this is a real deal god or it's a god in the asgardian <clears> sense <throat> where it's like an amazing you know spatial dimensional creature that was worshipped as a god by ancient humanity yeah i'm intrigued to see what they'll do i'm sure they'll probably go the route uh kind of how he's doing it in the comics where he's kind of like uh cast out Konshu mm, doesn't want anything right. to do with him I imagine that's going to be the through line of the series where he gets out from under Konshu's grip or something right right <clears throat> uh we also see Moon Knight beating the shit out of what very well might be a werewolf or an Anubis creature I think it's an Anubis creature 
Right, because we're keeping hard with the Egyptian theme there and everything. Or also, here's an interesting theory. It's not an Anubis creature. It's just a regular guy that he yeah. sees that it's, looks it, like an Anubis creature, a la they live. It's it's that old lady who gets in the elevator oh. with him. <laughs> oh, shit. He's just beating the shit out of this old lady. It wouldn't be the worst thing Moon Knight has done, honestly. He's not cutting <laughs> off faces that we know of. Uh, yes. <laughs> yet there's certainly time for it uh yeah I, I mean obviously a lot of people assume too that werewolf by night is going to be showing up in this show at some point because moon knight showed up in an issue of werewolf by night originally and werewolf by night has a uh halloween special coming out this year i think it's this year Ooh, i think you're right yeah so i mean the timing would certainly make sense for that it's interesting too them putting the show in london and not in new york where, like, every other big Marvel <clears throat> thing has shown is, do you think this is them maybe saying, like, look, London is going to be the epicenter of the spooky, scary, supernatural side of the Marvel universe? I think so, because you got that, you got Black Knight, Blade is from there, so, and yeah. Blade's there as well. I uh, Yeah, I imagine, yeah, and it's like also, like, the connections with Europe, it's a bit, like, it's, like, older than America, so you've got, like, True. a bit more lore and everything. I guess you do. Thank you, Inspire Room Incorporated, uh, okay. for that. Always appreciate it. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of places they can go with this Moon Knight show. And honestly, I'm just psyched in general to see regular Joe and Jane popcorn, you know, Joe Schmo streaming show, uh, really get excited for Moon Knight and be like, oh, this looks cool. Yeah, and then realize it's all about uh, a mentally disturbed man beating yeah. the shit out of what may be real, like, monsters, or maybe not. You don't know. <laughs> Now, I will say I did see some Jewish commentators a little upset that they don't seem to confirm one way or another if Mark Spector is Jewish in this. It's and a yeah, fucking trailer, you know. They're not it's gonna, a trailer. You yeah. know, just, just stop the trailer and make sure he's Jewish, you know. Yeah, I, I, they said the same thing about the Harley show, too. And I'm like, no, just fucking, just fucking, don't call Jewish erasure yet until you've seen every episode. Exactly. So, look, there's still That's a good so chance. That's so stupid. Like, yeah, they're not just going to stop the trailer and say, this character is Jewish and then move on. Yeah, also, we've only seen Grant. There's other personalities mm -hmm. in him, so chances are there's a lot that could still be involved. I mean, yeah. if they're keeping to his comic lore, then yeah, he should be the son of a rabbi still when yeah. we get to hear that story. Yeah, and I imagine we will. I imagine we will, too. Again, they got multiple episodes to fill. I'm sure they will use every part of the character they can. Multiple episodes, probably multiple seasons. He's going to appear in probably oh, yeah. movies as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, now that we know that that's the trajectory now yeah that yeah you do good in a show and then you get to cross over into a movie mm -hmm. uh now that wasn't the only piece of moon knight news moon knight had an amazing week last week because they also announced uh on top of the jed mckay series that is going strong right now <laughs> moon knight will be actually getting a brand new anthology book moon knight red white and blood part of the red white and blood series carnage got one I think Wolverine got one. Well, he's mm -hmm. getting one too now. Yeah, and uh, it's got some pretty good writers on this. Yes, I think the first one is going to be penned by Jonathan Hickman, which had everyone losing their goddamn mind because it's like, wait, wait, wait. So, you know, he, he's moved off with X-Men. He's done with that, but now he's dipping his toes into Moon Knight. <laughs> this is his next big thing. He's going to re redefine Moon Knight. <laughs> For a new generation. Well, he really is going to be redefining Moon Knight because apparently from what we know of Hickman's story, he's actually going to be telling a future version of a brand new Moon Knight that's not even Mark Spector. Yeah. Or maybe we're supposed to think it's not Mark Spector. Maybe it's a new personality. A new personality. He gets in the future. <laughs> yeah, how come no one's tried that yet? He develops a new personality. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's that's probably going to be coming up soon. I imagine because of this, maybe this leads into what Jed McKay is doing or something. Quite possibly, I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's the year of Moon Knight. If you're a Moon Knight <laughs> fan, your cup runneth over. You are about to eat very, very well for the next year. Yeah, and that, and that uh, when does that come out? Does that come out around March, the time the yes. show starts? Yeah, perfect, of, of perfect course. synergy. Of course, to coincide with the show. You know, we got to we gotta get all, we got to wring all the Moon Knight out of this we possibly can. Yeah. <laughs> Which again, you know, we, we talk about cult characters and where they are in the pecking order of publishing companies and everything moon knight i think has probably gotten more you know swings at bat than just about every other you know uh cult marvel character it felt like he got a new book every year there in the lead up to this show before it was even announced yeah and each one kind of redefined the character in like an interesting yeah. way like we had the jeff lemire stuff with the mr knight 
yep. the stuff Jed McKay is doing at the moment where it's like he's running like a night detective agency mm-hmm. sort of thing is pretty cool. Al Ewing had a run in there, I think, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, I, I think so. Are there, there was someone, where, well, what was the one where they were all like basically silent, where they were like silent and the art did all the talking? Uh, I know the one you're talking about. I can't remember who was writing that, though. It was the one before Jeff Lemire. It was yeah. like, oh, uh, who was the guy who did that Karnak book? that like almost didn't get finished or i don't think ever did finish oh god uh, this is going to drive me crazy i i, I don't know chat chat help me out don't make me run and google this right now. <laughs> oh i'm driving myself crazy a really well respected writer oh no it was ellis and not respected anymore but yeah warren ellis had one okay yeah because i do remember um oh what's his name was doing the art day uh lynch Yes. I was going to say David Lynch. It wasn't David Lynch. <laughs> yes, David Lynch decided he was going to draw comic books that week. <laughs> yes, it was Warren Ellis who did it. Formerly respected Warren Ellis. And every issue was like one and done and like really mm-hmm. silent and really moody and everything. And he basically, I think the first issue was like his take on the raid where Moon Knight just fought his way to the top of a building. Yeah. And it was really good. Yeah, now the chat's in there. Thank you, Kurt, for Alice. I figured it out eventually. Thank you for having my back on that. I was pulling my fucking hair out on that one. (laughs) But yeah, so, you know, cup runneth over for Moon Knight. You got a lot of good Moon Knight coming your way. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good Moon Knight. I I always like it when a cult character gets served, you know? Yeah. And uh, speaking of characters getting served, if you're a Captain America fan, your cup will also be running over very soon. Uh, you and I, Matt, had theorized for a while, you know, what what was coming next uh, for Captain America? You know, we had the United States of Captain America, which was a mini that ended. We got that Iron Man Captain America book that I'm not reading right now, but I know you are. And mm-hmm. the question is, what's next for Captain America? Well, the answer is a lot of things because we're actually going to be getting not one but two brand new captain america books yeah we're getting you're getting your steve rogers one and you're getting your um sam wilson captain america book just in time for his new movie how about that i am genuinely shocked that they didn't put him back in the costume in time for the tv show but yeah the movie only makes sense uh the sam wilson book is going to be called captain america symbol of truth And it is going to be written by former civil rights lawyer turned comic book writer. uh, Oh, what's their name? Oh, what's their name? I have it right there. Uh, Owen Biucci, I do believe, is what it is. Really interesting guy. I haven't read a lot of his work. I think this is his first big superhero gig. But yeah, they got a civil rights lawyer to write a freaking Captain America book. How cool is that? That's really cool. And uh, the Steve Rogers book is going to be uh, written by Kelly Lanzig. And it's going to be Captain America Sentinel of Liberty. So, great names. Yeah. Uh, it's actually going to be written by Jackson Lansing and, oh, Co- and, Colin, Ke- and Colin Kelly. Right, okay. See, see I fe- they did the fusion dance and together they became Kelly Lansing. <laughs> they are larger and more powerful this way, you see. They united like a Megazord. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the same team that did that Kang book from not that long ago. Yeah. So yeah, this is very interesting. It's all going to start with a zero issue that's going to set up the new status quo and they're going to spin it off into new and interesting adventures. And in fact, even just by looking on here, we can see all, you know, your notable Captain America and expended or extended characters. You got Red Skull, you got Winter Soldier, you got the Invaders, you got Zemo, you got Young Bucky and Crossbones and everyone else. The Young Bucky is is, is throwing me off because Winter Soldier's there as well yeah really yeah we split the difference we traveled in time (laughs) or we'll be getting uh, flashbacks or something that yeah probably yeah i mean if the invaders are here and it's old freaking namor in his undies and original hank ham and human torch (laughs) yeah well they're all back in the comics anyway at the moment they are yeah also u.s agent is here too but little in the back he's there too (laughs) he was popular for a little bit (laughs) He was, and then we made him a villain again and made him join the Thunderbolts, which makes me wonder where the hell is he going to be coming in at this? <laughs> he, he's, he's like that uncle that fucking ruins Thanksgiving every year. God damn it, Johnny Walker, we give you a chance every year, and every year you disappoint us. <laughs> every year, I mean, it looks like you're about to learn something, and then you completely like fuck it up and fall into the turkey drunk. <laughs> Yep, pretty much. Uh, I like, too, the shield difference here. Cap obviously has his, and Sam has a new shield with blue on the outside and a design that actually looks closer to the movie. It looks pretty cool. 
It looks really cool. I like it. I know they played around with that idea in United States of Captain America, Sam having a different shield all his own. Yeah, I kind of wish he would have, he, he kept, like, he, he got, like, that, um, uh, that energy shield one. Mmm. That, that Cap used there for a little bit in United States of Captain America. That is a cool one, the energy shield. Well, that's for Coulson, you see. Coulson has the energy <laughs> shield. He's laid claim to it. <laughs> What, have they done anything with Colson in the last little bit? Uh, he, he, they, he's in jail after Heroes Reborn, I think. Oh, that or they, like, or he something with happened? Mephisto or something. I can't exactly remember what they've done. Oh yeah, he he, he went to hell, didn't yeah. he? And he's the prisoner he was, of he the was, Council of Red. Yeah, he was the reason Heroes Reborn happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, then yeah. and then Mephisto fucked him over, and the heroes got out and everything. Yeah. Oh, geez, a deal with the devil didn't work out for someone. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is really cool. I'm really interested in this. I don't know if I want to read two Captain America books a month when I already have a dozen Batman <laughs> books a month. <laughs> but hey, if anyone deserves it, it's a Cap It's Captain America. And now I'm really interested in the Sam book because they basically seem to say, hey, maybe we ended that Nick Spencer run a little prematurely. Maybe the idea of a more public facing Cap who's willing to take stands on things and isn't so, you know, stuck in amber is probably a good thing. Yeah. I like the idea of we can do with Sam everything we couldn't do with Steve. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. Because, yeah, that, that Spencer run did kind of end, like, really abruptly, didn't it? It did. They really should have kept going with it. They were yeah. much too quick to try and return to the status quo. And, yes, I know he got a new Falcon series right afterwards, but that was never going to last. <laughs> no. And it didn't. I felt so bad for the team on that one. I, I tried to read it, too, because I'm like, ooh, this is good. Yeah, he got that one. Then he got the, the he, he did the team up with uh, Bucky just as the Falcon and Winter Soldier series was coming out. And, yeah, then, yeah. and then he's sort of just being like hanger on for all these things. So, yeah, it's good that he's getting a headline a book again. Yeah, so expect uh, for us to cover the Zero issue and probably issue one of each book before I decide which one I want to stick with. <laughs> <laughs> also, hey, uh, you know, obviously, you know, both guys writing this are amazing writers and don't need the input of some internet nobody. But, hey, for new Captain America stories... Can we not retread the old ground of some villain trying to co-op the image of Captain America or turn the American people on Captain America? Because it's literally been the only story you've told for the last five years. Yeah, yeah, every run starts with that. Can we Can we please do anything else? <laughs> I am fine with anything else. <laughs> Hell, send him back to Zemo World or when he was like Mad Max Captain America for oh, a minute. Yes, the Rick Remender stuff. Yeah, I, I remember not liking that when that was new, and I'm like, this isn't Captain America, but now I would happily take it. <laughs> For the love of fuck, do something, do anything different with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now moving on from there, we got some Star Wars news, and I know Matt's been chomping at the bit to talk about Book of Boba Fett, so we'll, we'll, we'll move that into a bigger conversation, but uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead has been cast for the Ahsoka show as who we don't know. Yeah, as probably random new character that ahsoka probably. meets because I, I can't yeah. think of any character who she could possibly be yeah new new character with spin-off potential yeah yeah and it, it it helps as well that she's married to ewan mcgregor as well oh really i didn't know that actually is she actually yeah yeah oh that's kind of cool <laughs> that's fun it's a family affair star wars you see <laughs> he got her the job it's nepotism you know nepotism but you know the good kind of hollywood nepotism <laughs> not the bad kind of hollywood nepotism <laughs> she's she's also wonderful in her own right and i'm interested to see what she'll bring to whatever role she's doing yeah yeah we we think she's playing a person but maybe she's playing another cute muppet maybe she's <laughs> baby yoda she we're never not gonna even recognize her because she's gonna be made up to look like uh a trend ocean or something oh my god mary who is it the trend ocean <laughs> ah yes the hot spunky new lizard person yeah a, a wookie or something <laughs> oh i'm all on board with that i know the internet has said is she sabine is she an older they've sabine? cast sabine oh did they really did yeah I they that? they cast a uh i i want to get the actress's name right they cast like a uh an asian actress oh i mean as they should because she was <laughs> Well, that's good, yeah. Again, see, that's the thing with Star Wars now. It used to be I was able to keep on top of all the news because there was so little coming out when they were only making movies. Now mm -hmm. they're making multiple TV shows at a time, and it's impossible to keep it straight. Yeah, multiple TV shows that most are coming out this year. I know. This is the fucking year of Star Wars, isn't it? Yeah. 
Speaking of which, uh, you, you had some words uh, for Boba Fett because this is basically the whole story. Hey, <laughs> a cool actress is going to be in the cool Star Wars show. But yeah, you you and I have really been digging on Boba Fett. Honestly, I think we've been digging on it more than other people. Uh, the fifth episode had a lot of people talking. It was The Return of the Mandalorian, which is an excellent title as a reference to Return of the Jedi and also because we get to see what Din has been up to. Yeah, he's been cutting people up with his Darksaber and trying, trying to learn a bit more about the Darksaber. Very much like Sabine was in Clone Wars. I love that episode. Mm-hmm. It had so many Clone Wars references and allusions to it. Yeah, well, th- this this episode really couldn't happen without that episode because that it episode couldn't. sets up so much about uh, the Dark Saber and like who who owned it, who who made it. Uh, how does it work? Like when you use it, because obviously when Din's using it, he's, he he wounds himself because he can't control yep. it because it's so heavy when when he uses it, and it's all sort of like a mind fuck sort of thing. thing. Yeah. And, and Sabine went through the same thing as well. They dedicated a whole episode to it in Rebels, and that, that might be my favorite episode of Rebels, if you twisted mm-hmm. my arm. Because mm-hmm. it's so good in you know, exploring Mandalorian culture versus Jedi culture, and we get that in this episode, too, with the armor being like, ah, you know, Jedis are all about, you know, foregoing feelings and pushing away relationships, but, you know, Mandalorians were all about the whole and the community and everything, and, you know, how uh, how could Grogu ever walk in both worlds? Yeah, and I, I like that it explored as well the loneliness that comes mm. with being a bounty hunter, because, like, no oh, one no yeah. one likes you, no one wants to be around you, and that sort of stuff, but then also comparing the loneliness to being part of this part of Mandalorian culture, which is essentially yes. a cult. It is. They are a bunch of religious fanatics is what they are, which, again, a lot of people were taking it to me. I'm sure you saw it, too, in some circles where it's like, oh, Bo-Katan ruined everything. Oh, Bo-Katan ruined it when Sabine (laughs) gave her the Darksaber without winning. I'm like, yeah, according to a bunch of religious fanatics. A a cult that told Din all about the Saber tried to take it from him, and then when they couldn't take it from him, they they kicked him out. (laughs) absolutely uh Kali frederick helping us out love mando's fight with pause this episode was so wizard yes we can officially start saying wizard again <laughs> yeah it's cool now <laughs> yeah that dark moratorium is over yeah the, the whole thing about uh din getting kicked out by his group there also dovetails so wonderfully with everything boba fett has been saying all season mm-hmm. you know a man needs to find his tribe his people a place where he belongs din thought he belonged with the mandalorians but they kicked him out first chance they got his real tribe is with grogu yeah and it's great because it keeps confirming to din that like what other people have said about these mandalorians he was with is completely like true where mm-hmm. they're like they're like uh savages savage cults like uh, what yeah. bo-katan was telling and they just keep proving that right and he's like yeah. oh okay well they don't want me i'll go go with grogu go with my little green baby guy my little my little friend there which how cute is it he gets a little gift for him made out of beskar and it's shaped like his head yeah yeah oh <laughs> Also, I think all fans can get behind uh, his new character motivation. Give me back my Grogu. <laughs> Give me back my highly marketable character. I love him so much. <laughs> Give him back. I need to go back and get the merchandise. <laughs> Literally. Man, I just have an amazing image in my mind of when we turn on Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 1. We just see Din breaking into the Jedi Temple, grabbing a baby <laughs> in his hand, and running as Luke and the other Jedis <laughs> chase after him. <laughs> And they just think, like, he kidnapped that child. No, I didn't. He wanted to come with me. <laughs> well, it sounds like we might be getting that next episode this week. Yeah, because he said it's like, oh, I'm going to get him back. I'm like, really? You're not saving that for your own show? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah again, again, it, it could be he says that, and then we this episode picks up where that episode ends, and they're attacked by the pikes, and he's got to deal with that first. Yeah, true enough. With, with, the, with the season ending with with him going off to i know the jedi temple wherever luke took him or something yeah Yeah. i I can't wait for din and boba to see face to face again because like you've been saying so much of boba fett the series has been about him you know learning how empty and sad life as a bounty hunter is and Mm -hmm. how you know it's left him with no family no real friends everything and that boba's been trying to build that up all season long i really hope din has a moment looking at boba being like wow you know if i keep on the path i'm on I could easily end up like you for better or for ill. Yeah, yeah. 
And I think a lot of people missed that. I think that flew over a lot of people's heads that that last episode was so good because of the themes and ideas that Boba Fett had been building in the other four episodes. And, and, and the thing is, in those four episodes, it's not as though it's like some like hidden meaning or stuff. In episode, no. I think it's in episode four where, where Bob is just, he's sitting there with Fennec and he's telling her, I'm sick of working for idiots. I want to yeah. work for myself because I know what I'm capable of, what I can do, and I can be... Mm -hmm. A better person for myself yeah this whole i mean they call it the book of boba fett but they should really call it the rebirth of boba fett because literally from <clears> scene <throat> one he's in the sarlacc and it's all gross and slimy and vaginal and what does he do he punches his way out <laughs> and from that moment boba fett is born again yeah yeah i guess they could have called the show boba fett born again but that kind of <laughs> sounds like he found jesus <laughs> Which he kind of did find Jesus. He found Tuscan Jesus. He found yeah. their tree frog hallucinogenic. So, yeah, he their nose frog lizard people hallucinogenics. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess he kind of did. Yeah, he's like he's like a space Mormon now or something. Yeah, this is this is what I believe, and I believed in nothing before. Now I believe in something. <laughs> Which, man, in, in a weird way, Boba Fett really is like the daddest Star Wars show ever, you know? It's like, ah, <laughs> oh, you know, I, I used to have a dark past, you know, but then I met your mom and cleaned up my act and found Space <laughs> Jesus, and now I take in abandoned and abused rancors, and, you know, I rehabilitate <laughs> them, and I ride my space bike on the weekend and everything. <laughs> and he's got a friend who's who who they that his friend has just like sent their little son off to like school yeah. so now he's Absolutely. got a lot of free time and he's building like spaceships that are like mm. basically like muscle a cars hot rod. yeah hot rod yeah <laughs> Oh my god, can we talk about that for a second? They actually <laughs> brought in something from the Clone Wars and people liked it. Oh my god. <laughs> they actually managed to recycle something from the prequels. Literally recycle something from the pre uh, prequels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And have it be cool and awesome. Yeah, I, I, it looks so fucking cool. It does. Also, uh, Din isn't as racist against droids as he used to be. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he's, he's not spitting on them in the gutter and everything now. And... Yeah. I, I like that character development because, you know, obviously what happened with Taika Waititi bot in the first season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and everything that's been building, like he's gotten past that trauma of him in the Clone Wars and whatnot. Yeah, he's getting over it. I'm like, oh, that's nice to see. I yeah. like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. All right, so there's your touch of Star Wars there, everybody. Uh, moving on from there, just some Justice League news, and I'm going to have to lean on you for this, Matt, because I have not <laughs> read Bendis' Justice League since the first arc, but apparently... They're going to be killing them all as of issue 75. Kill them all and let God <laughs> sort them out. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're not there yet. We're still a couple of issues off from that. Um, okay. But yeah, Joshua Williamson is taking over the book. And oh, is he? Yeah. yeah I didn't that, know that that's, part. That's who's writing this. Um, Fuck, I got to read it then. Yeah, so he's taking over. It's tying in with like what he's doing in uh, Justice League Incarnate because the, mm. the, the premise is the Justice League get called up to face the great darkness. Oh. They go out to do it and they all end up fucking dying. Cause, and that's cause, why the Legion of Superheroes and, is there. And it's 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 why... It, no, no, the, the Legion of Superheroes are there just because the great darkness is fucking with them as well some, mm. somehow. Um, but yeah, it, it's actually kind of fucking genius because of what uh, Williamson is doing in Incarnate where like th this Justice League isn't the main characters. They're just like another Justice League on another Earth. And as we've seen throughout that series, like anyone can die. Like all these yeah. different leagues are dying because they're not... And they do. Because this league isn't the main characters. So they can die because the main characters are Flashpoint, Batman, uh, President Superman, their little team there they've got there. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I like that they're, they're treating them as just like secondary characters and not the main th characters. Because think of all the pro crisis events that are where the Justice League are the main characters. Indeed. And now they're just also, secondaries. Also, too, killing them in issue 75 is fun, too, because that's a reference to Superman 75 and the death of yep. Superman, right? Yep. Hopefully this issue gets like a blind poly bag with like oh armbands and stuff in it. That'd be cool. Fuck. I mean, you know what? Joshua Williamson is a massive nerd and clearly has a deep, <laughs> deep love for superhero and comic book history. And because he's the man that is basically shouldering the entire creative load for DC right now, yo, Joshua Williamson, make them have a poly bag for this. <laughs> That'd be so fucking awesome. Make them do it, because oh my god, I would I would buy five and they'd be worthless, just like the poly bags for her <laughs> Death of Superman. Yeah, because there's too her. many of them. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, I like I know comic books have moved past all that dumb gimmicky bullshit, but I loved it when King and Black gave us tattoos, and I would yeah. love it if this came in a poly bag. It'd be so fucking cool. But yeah, that, so it, it connects up with his what he's doing with Infinite Frontier. Uh, apparently, it also connects up with what Philip Kennedy Johnson is doing in Superman, hmm. uh, in Action Comics. Uh, yes, because uh, what is it? We see uh, John featured quite prominently mm-hmm. on here. Yeah, and obviously because. Superman died there, but he's not dead in action comics. So he was quick to point out that it actually all connects. There we go. Also, Robin is front and center too, because uh, William Williamson's writing that book too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Also, thank you, uh, Isaac, as well for that one. Appreciate it. Okay, see, I wasn't interested in this. I wasn't going to read it, but now that I know it's Williamson and it's connected to his bigger yeah. saga that he's been telling since Infinite Frontier, okay. Yeah, I have to imagine he's going to be taking over Justice League. He'll be doing this, and I imagine, I have to imagine the Justice League might go away for a little bit. Maybe. Because he, he, he made it very clear that th- like they are actually going to die. This isn't like something where it's like a fake out yeah this they're actually going to die they're not all going to die there's going to be some a survivor or at least two survivors uh how looks to be the survivor at least one of them because he's a front row center well he wasn't he's not on the team currently oh yeah that's right he's not john stewart took his place yeah he's kind of just like out there sort of around Yeah. yeah which again what does that tell you about green lantern oh hell's too hot shit for the justice league these days <laughs> he's he's gone through quite a bit with grant morrison and what they did in True. that book in their book and everything yeah <laughs> oh and i guess black adam's alive too because i'm looking at him right now and he was one of the newer members of the team yep which i guess he'll be sticking around until that rock movie huh because we got to make sure he's nice and prominent yeah not nice and he's a hero you know because black and adam's a hero, a, a hero now <laughs> He's a hero now. There you go. There's his little journey. <laughs> also, hey, I like uh, someone remembered uh, the other two Green Lanterns, Jessica Cruz and yeah. Simon Baz. I like they're there too. Hi. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. I know it, this is just a cover uh, and it's not indicative of like what's going to actually be in the book, but it is surprising that they're there, mainly because Jessica at the moment is a Yellow Lantern. And, oh, really? And the Green Lanterns don't actually exist anymore because the mm. power battery blew. I'm catching up on Green Lantern at the moment. There's um, a lot to the, catch the up on. Power land, the, the, the power battery blew up and they don't actually have access to their ring power all that oh. much. So, yes, it's intri- intriguing that they're there. It's a, it's a very interesting snapshot of the DC universe right now because we have, obviously, Jackson Hyde up front as mm-hmm. Aquaman, Robin up front there as well, Superboy, uh, John as Superman. It's a very interesting little pastiche. And also, also Plastic Man is there too. Good for him. <laughs> I guess we needed someone to overact. Oh, woe is me. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to know as well that a lot of those members were actually on the Future State Justice League team. Hmm. Again, is you again who who wrote that, Matt? Who wrote that story? <laughs> was it sure Joshua it was, Williams? I, I, I think it was. <laughs> is is this him finally pulling the trigger? Is this him <laughs> doing the thing? <laughs> Has he been playing the fucking long game this whole time? <laughs> Is he just that smart? Also, uh, the man is great, no doubt about it. But how many books are they going to make him write at DC before he has a full breakdown? <laughs> well, he's, he's working so far. I mean, he's he, he's doing the one thing that I think a lot of writers don't do, and that is plan out, like, way, True. way, way in ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, he's writing, uh, he, he's writing Batman. He's yeah. writing Robin. Yeah. He's writing Deathstroke. Yeah. He's writing Justice League Incarnate slash Infinite Frontier, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he's writing Deathstroke, and now he's going to be writing Justice League. So that's six books he is currently writing. Yeah, and, and as well as like most of those books are connected together, so it makes it yes, like a are. little bit easier to like plot out a story. Maybe he's just thinking about it as one big long story instead of several smaller. Yeah, stories. that probably makes it a lot easier. I guess. I yeah, I would love to ask him about uh, what is it about his process. Yeah. So there you go, everyone. There's Justice League. They're dying. How long will they be dead? Take your bets. <laughs> uh, now, after that, we have another interesting piece of news that actually a- a- answers a question that I've been asking for yonks now, and that is uh, J- uh, James Tynan's Joker. What the hell is going to be going on with that? Apparently, it's going to be ending as of issue 14, mm-hmm. or at least the Tynan run will be ending as of issue 14. They say that the book will actually be coming back for a second season a la those milestone books. 
And in my mind, I'm just like, ooh, can they actually finish this story in time? You know, is 14 going to actually be like an end that makes sense? Yeah. I wonder. Yeah. I really, I really wonder uh, what that's going to be. I hope it's good. But all I know is they better put someone really fucking good on second season if they expect me to pick up a Joker book for the second time. Yeah. Who do you reckon it will be? Very good question. D- Joshua Williamson. <laughs> <laughs> he starts tying it into his Infinite Frontier story. And he had to this Joker. He's a, he's, a, he's a multiversal threat now. <laughs> oh. But five months from now, all DC comics will just be written by Joshua <laughs> Williamson. <laughs> yeah, Christ, who, who the hell else do they have at uh, DC right now who might have a good Joker story in them that hasn't been told before, I wonder? Hmm. I, I really just... They maybe put the, the, the character on ice for a little bit. Just, they really should, but I yeah. guess this one sold good enough that they want to do a second season. I guess so, yeah. Also, the thing, too, it's called the Joker book, but it's actually about Jim Gordon. It's just an excellent yeah. Jim Gordon story. So if they want to use that as a backdoor to be like, hey, we're doing a Joker story, but it's really about Rene Montoya or it's about someone else. That, that'd that be really cool, yeah, like where the Joker's just like the uh, – he's like a force in the book. Yeah. yeah. That, that would be quite interesting. He's this overarching thing, too, because, yeah, at the end of this story, they've been building up to it where it's like, oh, will Jim kill the Joker finally or not? Seems to be like the big thrust of this story, and I hope they have a good way out of it. Yeah. Because it's like, obviously, you can't kill the Joker. And Jaden said Matthew Rosenberg. Yeah, more than likely, it's going to be Matthew Rosenberg. You're probably right. Give it to Mark Russell and Steve Lieber and make it like a full-blown comedy. (laughs) oh that's good make it just a dark as fuck comedy yes please okay that would be enough to make me pick it up yeah those two would be enough to be like all right you're going in a completely different direction (laughs) because you assume if you call it the joker book it's basically a license to print money anyway yeah so you can really explore and experiment and do some interesting stuff so yeah get a weird experimental person to write it Mm mm-hmm that's uh, that's what i would like and joke, I, I joke, it... joker gets into nfts or something <laughs> Ooh, i'm all about chaos and this is chaotic <laughs> as fuck <laughs> uh folding ideas actually had a really good like hour-long video explaining the history of bitcoin and non-fungible oh, tokens in a, in a way that even i could understand it <laughs> And yes, confirming what I already thought, it's a scam. Everyone involved knows it's a scam. They're all just getting into it in hopes they can be the, the scammer and not the scammy. The, the, the other day, I had this guy tag me and like a bunch of other people. I think Sal was also tagged in it yeah. uh, about like us doing NFTs or, or something. I'm like, I fucking clown on people who fucking do NFTs. All the time. Why the fuck am I want to do NFTs? <laughs> Thorgy was another guy. He actually posted an email. He's got like several emails. Yeah, of I've gotten, I've gotten to, a couple <laughs> of him wanting to get an NFTs. And Thorgy's yeah. like, I haven't done comic content in like two years. Yeah, I've been getting them. I've been getting. I've, I got like a bunch from like a, a bunch of comic gators as well. Oh Jesus Christ! Like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna. Sh- I'm not gonna shill sure. your stupid, shitty fucking dinosaur comic. You're a fucking comic gator. And the fact that you're asking me lets me know that you don't watch a goddamn thing yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are those are always funny. Man, do, I'm sure you saw it now that we're on the fucking NFT train. What was it? It was, uh, what is it? Paris Hilton and fucking, what's his name? The Night Show host talking about their NFTs they're doing now. Oh, God. Well, oh what's his name? The fucking human Not Jimmy para- Kimmel. Yeah, human parasite, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon, yeah. yes, who it's like, why did we ever like Jimmy Fallon again? Why? No why one likes him. Popular? No, as, as Mike Stoklasa said, the only thing Jimmy Fallon should host is a parasite. <laughs> for dumb tish. Oh yeah, because like, like I'm a dude who watched Saturday Night Live for years, and everyone loved Fallon when he was like on the news with T- uh, Tina Fey and everything. I'm like, I don't get his appeal. I've never gotten his appeal. He, but he it's, laughs at everything people say, Joel. He laughs at all of his own jokes, exactly, which I'm sure people are like, but Joel, you laugh at your own jokes. Yeah, but my jokes are funny, though. <laughs> See, that's the problem with it. But yeah, him and Paris Hilton were shilling their own NFTs, and you could just tell they were reading off a script. And I now know why so many celebrities are getting in on it now, because the only way that an NFT can turn a profit is if you pump and dump it. So you <laughs> need more money to put money in yeah. so you can cash out, which yeah. is why celebrities are getting into it, because they have more reach and can trick more people into getting into it. Yeah, and so, some of the celebrities as well that are getting into it are just so 
like there's disheartening like uh goddamn bryce dallas howard he just did the the mandalorian episode like she she's shilling oh, nfts know. and that's so disappointing then you got people like troy baker who fucking yeah. shill it and then like he doubles Ooh, he, he, yeah. he he deliberately like antagonizes people when shilling for it and then when people call him out for it he he delivered some speech about being a storyteller and how that oh, relates I to know. nfts it's just so fucking terrible such bullshit as the chat says gwyneth paltrow yeah paltrow i understand because oh, she's, she's a, she's already... a fucking kook <laughs> Yeah, she's something of a con woman already with yeah. goop and everything. This is just the next con for her. Yeah. Do these are these like therapeutic NFTs or something? Mm, of course, yes. They <laughs> they smell like vaginas. <laughs> man, I've man, I've had two vagina jokes in one episode. It's a special episode. <laughs> all right, moving quickly on because Matt and I could just clown on NFTs all day. Uh, so Earth Prime is going to be a big CW DC crossover event with the comics, which on one hand, oh, that's cool. I'm glad they're getting a little love and attention. And on the other hand, have you seen some of these CW superhero shows recently? This might be the worst era to try and do this in. The, yeah, the, the, the only good show is Superman and Lois. And Legends is still funny, too. I don't know if it's must-watch television, but I'm never upset when I do catch up on, like, three episodes. I think it's fine, but I, I'm getting the feeling it's like, okay, it's... It's starting to lose its stick. Yeah, you're you're almost out of ideas yeah. again. The fact that they built a whole like half season arc about them not being able to time travel anymore yeah. is probably a good indicator yeah, yeah. that the writers' room is like, how do we fucking challenge ourselves? Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's a whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure this will be really good for someone, but mm -hmm. at the same time too, I'm like, yeah, I, I only watch like two of these now, and I think the other ones are probably gonna get canceled very soon. Well, I think Flash is is gonna have one more season because yeah, they just they nine. they just uh grant gustin just secured a season nine deal but it was only for season nine and it, they he stipulated that he'll only do 15 episodes this oh, season interesting so the season that, might might be a bit better it sounds like they're gonna have to write him out if he's only doing 15 because don't they do like 26 episodes a well, season well that could just that could just mean they just do 15 episodes for the season now which is probably how they should always have done it. One of the biggest problems yeah. with the CW shows, and we like most of them. In fact, I think we like them more than most people on comic book internet, is that they were all too fucking long. Any good story yeah. got dragged out to the yeah. point of ridiculousness. Yeah, it's it's why Superman and Lois is so good, because that's 15 episodes, and that that goes through all the story really well. Oh, and Stargirl, yeah, Stargirl too. But I forget Stargirl as part of the CW universe, because it didn't start on CW. And it's technically set on a different world. Is technically its own thing, but yeah, Star Girl is also good. Next yeah. season's going to have Mr. Bones. Yes, yeah, everyone get excited for Mr. Bones and his wild ride. <laughs> Mr. Bones, make it happen, everyone. Keith David is Mr. Bones. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, this sounds cool, and it, it, it's kind of interesting to do these, uh, like, because obviously they can't really do like physical crossovers because of COVID and everything. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so like doing them in comics is is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Not a bad idea. Do, do you remember very early on, like when season one and like season two of Flash and Arrow were going on, they actually had like little digital comic tie-ins? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I feel like they probably should have kept doing that if they wanted to keep building these universes. But honestly, I don't think they needed comics because with 26 episodes a season, I think they did actually fill out their universes. Yeah, more or less, yeah. I mean, they're, they're pretty good. And like, yeah, I imagine you could probably get some interesting crossover material here and there. But by and large, I, I cannot help but shake the feeling that they're striking while the iron's a little <laughs> cold on this one. Like, yeah. CW Hero Mania, I, like, I think it was only downhill after they did their uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. It does feel like that, yeah. Because after that, it's like, okay, that's our big thing. We're just, we're not going to try anymore. Yeah, like, that's that's the height. It's amazing that you got there. And yeah, you're right. Because of COVID, they can't build up to another big crossover right now. Yeah, they had all they had heaps of plans for it, but then no, yeah. nothing happened. And then and then also there's like the drama stuff with obviously Ruby Rose quitting and like all that yes. sort of stuff. And and maybe the producers suck. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's oof, that's a dark cloud over everything, isn't it? Yeah. At least at least um th through these comics, I know Batwoman might end up being pretty good the, the show's awful yeah. the show's fucking awful <laughs> they you so said that they've got their her own joker now oh does she really yeah yeah and it's mm. it, it's it's so shameless because it's just it's just the guy who wears like colorful clothing and he's got like like purple hair 
and like, like a character it, from the comics at least no no he's an original character who they've just uh, stuck all the joker stuff on of course i mean say what you want about legends that show stopped being a dc superhero show <laughs> like season two yeah but but then but it, it replaced it with being just like a fun sci-fi show absolutely they saved wish... barack obama from gorilla grod and Damn and right and help did. help george lucas like star wars and stuff like that <laughs> And then a giant Furby fought the devil. How can you yeah. not love that? Yeah, that's that's fun. I wish more of those shows went in that direction where they're like, all right, we're done being a superhero show now. Time to be something else. Yeah. Except for Superman. Superman's doing just fine being a superhero show. It's doing really fucking well. Especially it's with that a... fucking red herring and fucking bizarro red herring. That's so fucking good. I know. We, You and I rarely get surprised anymore. That surprised us. That was so, so good. Such a good uh, swerve there absolutely now from one dc topic to another and i feel like i have to bring this up because i had people asking me about this today even gotham girl matt remember her tom king's big new character who was going to be so important in fact at the end of the first arc they imply that gotham girl is going to be the one to kill batman yes remember how she was yep. sick and dying and she was bane sidekick for a bit but then she got to be good again and batman saved her and <laughs> then she disappeared yep <laughs> well that sounds needlessly fucking tedious but guess what she's back in a series of detective comic backup stories so we can finally know what's going on with gotham girl <laughs> everyone's favorite character oh no who's writing this king isn't writing it is he no i think they handed oh, this off to someone else oh thank god <laughs> yeah jesus jesus christ uh, well, at least, at least without King there, maybe someone can wring something good out of the character. Maybe. That's <clears> good. Like, I'm I'm morbidly interested in this, where it's like, okay, who thinks they have the pitch that can save this? Who thinks they got the magic touch? I mean, j just in, like, how complicated and, like, tediously, like, complex everything of her backstory is, that there could be a, an interesting, like, jumping on point for, like, the character and exploring that and how her life is complicated, but, like, why? Like, yeah, why is it? Yeah. yeah, there could be something there. I don't know. I I know I wouldn't be the one to pitch that one. I'd be like, you know what? Let let dead dogs lie. <laughs> we can we can move on. We can do. I'm sure there's many more Batman. Uh, what is it? Extended family of characters who would love to get a backup. But sure, let's do something with Gotham Girl. I guess. Yeah, the the, the hit the smash hit character Gotham Girl. The smash. Everyone <laughs> talking about her. Smash hit. <laughs> A million years, Gotham Girl. A million years, <laughs> getting into adventures, Gotham Girl. Like, 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 even her costume is not that good. Like, her costume is like a parody of like Golden Age superheroes. Yeah, well, they've even changed it in this new one where it, it like looks worse. Amazing. Is that the is that the point? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Again, is this going to be? Like, are they going to secretly be taking the piss out of her in needlessly complicated characters? Well, they've been doing that ever since King fucking left. Like, they, just, like, True. the amount of shit they've had to, like, revert from King's time on Batman and, like, Heroes in Crisis Amazing. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Again, Joshua Williamson <clears throat> doing the fucking Lord's work trying to yeah. rescue Thomas Wayne from just being ridiculous. Yeah, we, 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 they re rescue Thomas Wayne and then give him back to the man who created him, Jeff Johns, for his series. Yeah, <laughs> yeah gonna, gonna try and wipe all that stink off as best <laughs> we can. I do hear Human Target is good, though, and you said really good things about uh, the Supergirl book, so, you know, maybe Tom King's bouncing back. Well, that, well, that's the thing, like, there's just some characters he's really good with. He did that amazing, amazing Superman series. Uh, yeah, you were telling me. Up in the Sky recently, like, uh, a couple of years ago. That was so, it was so on character, so fucking good. And then you read his Batman stuff, or, like, Heroes in Crisis, and it's like, what the fuck is this guy smoking? No idea. Uh, Eric's uh, helping us out in the chat again. I feel bad for Gotham Girl. She's another powerful woman that goes crazy in comics. Yeah, that does tend to happen a lot, doesn't it? I wonder yeah. what all these writers are trying to say. Ah, women, you know, so emotional. Yeah, the minute they get any sort of power, fucking, they turn into fucking Hitler. Monsters. Da, yep. PTA, or, you know, PMS metaphor. Da. <laughs> Which, Christ, they were making fun of that goddamn on Animaniacs back in the day. Remember Katie Kaboom? Yeah. <laughs> You know, just a normal girl till one day she literally turns into a raving monster. I wonder why. <laughs> but dumb tish. 
And for Mike asking in the chat, is she still psycho pirated? A very interesting question mm -hmm. that we will get and to when we talk about yes. what we read this week. And the fact that it's happening in detective comics as well. Mm. 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 <laughs> as I stroke my beard and cluck my tongue and wonder see, what is see, to be done with this Gotham girl. It's even funnier, like we were talking about t uh, Joshua Williamson, that that all comes from Joshua Williamson stuff in Infinite Frontier. So, yeah. It's true. Yeah, it's <laughs> he, true. He's it's got his connected. fingers everywhere. <laughs> Finger on the pulse, man. Uh, our last story this week is, uh, hey, Spider-Punk getting a miniseries by Cody Ziegler. Because, uh, you know, we're heading into, uh, obviously, uh, Into the Spider-Verse and Into the Spider-Verse 2. So it's time for more of the spider people to get more screen time. I really hope that Hobie getting a mini series lets us know that he's going to be in the new movie. Yeah, probably we will. I think it's a good chance he will be. Absolutely. I, I loved spider punk as a concept. I love his costume. I love it's Hobie and not Peter. I love his weird, like tank girl, British, anarcho fascism, judge dread world that what? he comes from. Yeah. It's so, and it's hardly been explored no not at all and i'm like why why is no one doing anything about this this yeah. is this is amazing there's so much material here if you should try and you know write it yeah so yeah i'm all on board for that i'm actually shocked they didn't get max bemis to write this because he's an actual mm -hmm. real punk musician who wrote <laughs> moon knight he's a consultant on it <laughs> he's a consultant there you know you just got to make sure that it's punk is punk <laughs> but yeah there you go everyone <clears throat> that was the news for this week yeah lots of well news for this week and also last week too yeah oh also hey i forgot to write it down uh because it technically broke just before we started there but apparently uh james gunn is going to be doing another the suicide squad spinoff due to the smash success of peacemaker it's like the most highly relay uh rated and reviewed dc live action project who who do we think he's spinning off uh I doubt Idris Elba would do television. Likewise, well, I doubt he, Marco he, would do Idris TV. Elba does television. He does Luther. It's oh, like, is Luther still going? Yeah, they, they just made a movie for it. Really? Fuck, yeah. I need to get back into Luther. Yeah, so he's, he's done TV. He did The Wire, you know, stuff oh, like that. Oh, true. Okay, so he's no stranger <clears throat> to prestige television. And I'm and sure if James Gunn said, hey, you want to come and, like, blow shit up for, like, six and episodes? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they would get it for it. And the fact that it's Idris Alba, I'm sure that would freaking blow people's minds. Yeah. He also had some unfinished stuff from the movie, too, concerning his own daughter and everything, and probably mm -hmm. being a fugitive from Amanda Waller. So yeah. there's places they could go with it. Yeah, I could see maybe, maybe Ratcatcher, too. Ratcatcher would be fun, because <clears throat> she's basically a new character, so there's a lot of stuff you could mm -hmm. do with her. Yep. Plus, I mean, it's more cute little rats, so who doesn't want that? <laughs> Do you know how many plushies you could make? You know how much plushy money you could make? <laughs> you have that Grogu money. Oh, get that Grogu money. Everyone got to get that Because you got to get the, the, the Sebastian, the rat uh, plush and everything, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, Polka Dot Man would be weird, but I don't doubt that James Gunn could do something with Polka Dot Man. Yeah, it'd have to be a prequel because he died in the movie. That's true, right? You would have to go back. We'd have to see his mom and everything else there. Yeah. I huh. Again, maybe it also could just be like a like a newer character like maybe he wants maybe. to put in the suicide squad at one point i don't know if a, a, a king shark film uh like tv series you'd have it'd to be hard yeah and it'd have to be it'd be like a comedy like a straight which, comedy which i would be fine with yeah. maybe this is dc and warner brothers being like hey they're doing that she hulk show so maybe we need our own giant lovable individual to build a show <laughs> around <laughs> Chem Dog saying that uh, Idris Elba was also in Law and Order. Yes, yes, he was actually. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. One of the shorter tenures, but he was on Law and Order. You're right. Yeah, I guess he doesn't have a problem doing television. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I imagine as long as it's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he only puts his name on quality television. So there you go. Yeah. How, um, what about who'd fuck Pete Davidson play in the opening of uh, Suicide Squad? Oh, Blackguard. Yeah. Blackguard, yeah, a Pete Davidson show, that would be pretty fucking funny. Yeah, Blackguard, and then you get Nathan Fillion in there as Arm Fall Off Boy. Absolutely, yeah, make it a prequel. Savant, yeah, so it can just be James <coughs> Gunn working with his friends. Yeah. <laughs> it's just fucking Savant, just like, you know, going for coffee. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean, maybe it could be also be a spin off from Peacemaker. True enough, yeah. So, well, I mean, we'll have to see who actually survives at the end of the show, but... Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, uh, hell, I, I would watch a Viola Davis uh, friggin' show where it's just Amanda Waller, what she does when she's not at work. <laughs> 
Like, what's her day-to-day -day life like? Is she just seething every minute of the day, trying not to kill people around her? <laughs> she's just seething, and then until and until she has her like chats with her daughter, where she's like yeah, happy really. and everything. <laughs> I, I love uh, Viola Davis literally phoning or Skyping in her cameo <laughs> to Peacemaker. <laughs> it's great. I love that. That's so great. Literally phoning it in. <laughs> yeah. What about a vigilante series? More of that creepy Jeffrey Dahmer glasses wearing motherfucker. He really is. Who he's he he might actually be like a good interpretation of autistic people. <laughs> yeah may, maybe uh, i've heard some people say that where it's like yeah he like doesn't understand things but you know he's still like happy and chipper about it yeah. and it doesn't stop him from having every <clears throat> relationship just some relationships yeah 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 there's a lot of places you could go with it for sure all right so with that out of the way everyone i guess we can finally hop into what we read this week i read a lot i didn't read everything but i read one two three four five uh, and six. I read six books. Yeah, I I, uh, I read a lot as well. All right, where where would we <clears> like <throat> to begin, Matt? Let's start with Action Comics issue one thousand and thirty nine, the fourth yes. part of War World Saga. I I just read this before we started. This was all. This was uh, the lore episode. Very much so, but very interesting lore. Yeah, going in, uh, into the lore of uh, War World and what War World is and how it doesn't belong to mongol it, it never did and it was actually a world before mongol even existed yes that's been built up on for hundreds of thousands of years by all the races that have been enslaved and murdered by the different mongols yeah which i like that where it's like oh cool so like every new race with their own technology and architecture have built it up so that's why war world's this weird twisty maze where no one knows how to get around yeah every every level is a different uh extinct race basically yeah that added something to it we also see what constitutes a war zone funeral and it's not them honoring the dead it's them celebrating that they killed another race that you know yeah. will be owned and controlled by the war zones in the afterlife and that affects clark because it's like hey i'm the last of my race i i, I like the, like what what uh what he was seeing there where he's like he's seeing the war zones celebrating this death and the, the extinction of another race at the hand of mongol and everything but then he was also seeing it from like what he what he is like a prisoner and like where, where they were seeing what their future holds yeah i think that was pretty really cool. well done scene really really well done also hey bringing back that <clears throat> weird source wall fragment again apparently the same writing on the fragment is also on the walls of ancient war world and the blood priests claim to be able to read it but superman knows they're actually full of shit yeah and they're just spouting mongols propaganda so his plan turns from helping these people into he's going to learn this this language this dead language and use that against uh the blood priests in mongol to like free the people which is pretty cool it's a very superman thing to do it is because you know obviously superman's having a hard time fighting in the arena he refuses to kill he's you know learning or you know trying to deal with the loss of his powers and, you know you got the old grizzled vet being there like when was the last time you were in a real fight you don't even block like a normal person yeah. would block yeah he because superman's had his powers for so long he he doesn't think about it anymore so like he, now that he's mortal he's still like blocking axes with his head and whatnot expecting them to smash and yeah, everything and I, they, I think that's pretty cool it's nice and i like the idea too of superman needing a training montage because he <laughs> asked the guy for help at the end it's like would you teach me to fight and it's like all right let's teach you to fight let's have a wax on wax off moment yeah and, and Nat natasha irons has got her side quest to become the the smith's apprentice to make mm -hmm. make weapons and armor for for superman and be his sort of uh his alfred uh per se and you know she's gonna make the house of l symbol that we saw well, in she did she form. did this issue oh that's right that she threw it down you're right then yeah. gave him a stick yeah 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 i made you this really cool thing and a stick and a beaten stick <laughs> hey you know you're it's you're level one in an rpg everyone's got to start with a stick <laughs> yeah meanwhile uh fucking midnight has gone all colonel kurtz on everyone and fucking apocalypse fucking now that. fucking i love that. attacking war zones in the middle of the fucking night He's built a goddamn guerrilla army of disenfranchised aliens, and they're just like fucking bushwhacking war zones in the dead of night. And I'm like, yeah, that's what Midnighter would do. Yep. Yeah, and we find out that Apollo is still alive, and he's powering War World, or like his energy is being used to do something to War World. 
Yeah, I assumed it was to power the red sun generators. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah, yeah, which you're absolutely right, Matt. Everyone gets their own little side quest, which is cool, where it's like, we're all going to escape, yeah. but we're all going to do our own thing to escape. Yeah. The one thing I really liked as well is Omax's little thing, where it's like, mm. she's like, she's she doesn't give a fuck about like superman or like what he's doing because of is she because she she or they i wanted to say I, that morrison made them not I'm not, binary i'm not too sure I, I i've seen they... i've seen both i've seen okay, both fair enough. so i'm not i'm not too sure but uh yeah they have they like hate superman now because superman got technically got light ray killed yeah i mean it makes a lot of sense so yeah omac it's just like, yeah, I'm totally fine being a fucking gladiator and I'm killing the shit out of these people. And she's actually getting respect by the other war zones. Yeah, they, they're, tr they're trying to uh, secure sponsorships with her. Yeah, that's so, so, very gladiator. So, so wear, wear my G Fuel symbol on your chest next time you go into the fucking <laughs> ring. G Fuel, the only drink on War World. It makes us strong, gives us gamer fuel. <laughs> For we war zones are the greatest gamers in the universe. <laughs> we have mastered all the gamer words with the hardest of ours. <laughs> <laughs> Which you just know that Omak is going to have to fight Superman at some point. That that's going to be like yeah, the big fight. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Where you know Superman's going to have to you know love and forgive his way out of this. You know, and you know be be the hero we know to be. It's it's good. I'm really liking this story. It, yeah, it's because it, it's just like so different, but it it, it it does all these really different things, but never forgets the core character. Totally. And a lot of people are quick to say like, oh, this is just ripping off Gladiator. Oh, this is just ripping off World War Hulk. I'm like, yeah, but they're doing their own thing. Lots yeah. of great stories are rip offs. Yeah, yeah. This is this is Superman's King Conan story basically. Totally. And also, I like Superman dealing with his morality too. Where like the old uh, Falasians are like, hey, you think you're better than us because you don't kill. We don't kill because we want to. We kill because it's the only way we can survive for ourselves and our children. And, you know, it's actually mm -hmm. kind of shitty of you to go out there thinking you're better than us. <laughs> and Superman's never had to think of that before. And he's like, no. oh, fuck, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. Yeah, very much so. I, I'm all about it. Yeah, and the art for this issue by uh, Ricardo Federici is just fucking amazing very frazetta is it not yeah. it looks like something that should be on a van yeah it's like very conan dark souls sort of stuff it's totally. fucking awesome yeah i'm all about it but yeah so if you have not been given the war world saga a chance you should get into it because it's really fucking good it's really fucking good it's really fucking cool i'm all about it uh what <coughs> else did we have this week um ba -dum, ba dum i mean i guess we talked about superman so I guess we should talk about Batman, too, but only it's the Batman book without Batman. I'm, of course, talking about Detective Comics number 1050. Yeah, Mariko Tamaki continuing the Shadow of the Bat story, and it's, it's pretty yes. good. It's been pretty good. We got a big fucking issue this week. We did, with a lot of great reveals there. We found out the drug that has been, you know, getting stolen from <coughs> Arkham Tower and sold on the streets is called Numb, which mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yep. Because, you know, it's all about numbing the senses and everything, especially yep. numbing poor Helena Bertinelli's senses. You know, she went there for help, and now whatever is being done to the people in the hospital is being done to her, too. Yeah, we learn a little bit of, like, why she was sent there, and it's to do... And uh, Tamaki makes, like, the best use out of, like, when she had to write all those stupid, like, vile tie-ins. Because it's all yep. tied into that, because Helena obviously got possessed by a vile parasite, mm -hmm. and then ever since then, she's kind of been uh like seeing fucked up by future. it and yeah and seeing it and then seeing it in people and everything but then the people might not be infected by a vial and might just be violent angry weirdos <laughs> we don't know it's great too because you know she gives uh nightwing a hell of a moment in this issue because nightwing is the one that tells her to go get help he never thought for a second that she would go to arkham tower for help mm -hmm. but hey arkham tower is having you know great luck with all these hardened super villains so why couldn't they help her that's the conflict in this in this series that i'm really liking where the heroes that they can see the evidence that the tower is actually working against these villains mm -hmm. and they're actually getting better and all it took was them to start kind of like drugging the the and 
treating the patients and it's working and th- th- but they know something's going on wrong with the whole fucking drug deal and stuff so it's like this this pull and push of like it's doing good yeah but then there's a drug trade but it's doing so, so we got we, we have to look into it even though we know we're not going to like what we find and yeah. uh, dr ware has to cover up the party crasher murder from the previous issue and we find out that he's he's corrupt but not in the way you think he's corrupt he doesn't no. want to like take over the world or anything he just kind of wants to make a lot of money off nakano <laughs> and off city contracts he's, he's a fucking con man yeah He's a literal con man, and obviously he's gotten in too deep with the party crashers who try to kill him once they find out about the covered-up murder. But wait, Dr. Ware's not alone. He actually has a secret benefactor in the form of, holy shit, it's Psycho Pirate. I know, he's coming back. This was the event he said he had to go to at the end of Infinite Frontier. (laughs) This is the one, apparently. And man, how cool is it that we have Psycho Pirate using his mental powers to, you know, incapacitate and pacify people in a hospital boy this sure reminds me of uh heroes in crisis when everyone was wearing psycho pirate masks but they never explained what the fuck the deal with that was yeah again it's like all these writers doing something better than tom king and the fact that psycho pirate was like the one giving bane the power to rewrite all the other Mm -hmm. villains personalities in city of bane and make that story that make no sense make no more sense and now he finally gets to be the big bad villain yeah it's 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 pretty cool i saw some art for this week's uh detective comics i saw it in a preview and it it seeks to imply that like weir and psycho pirate are like old friends mm-hmm. like like childhood friends and that's why well, they, we... that's why they like brought each other in on this this fucking con well we did see flashbacks to where's childhood and yeah. his mom did get sent to a mental institution at some point maybe that's where he met him yeah and well, as well he had a friend in that issue as well like a best that's friend right yeah oh yeah was that was that roger hayden was that a young roger hayden <laughs> you never know maybe i don't think the friend Quite was possible. named no he was not actually yeah Ooh, interesting man, man holy shit i never thought i would be stoked for a psycho pirate story but between this and infinite <clears throat> frontier it's like oh damn i'm all in on psycho pirate yeah, it's it's so fucking cool absolutely yeah it's it's the most i've enjoyed <clears throat> detective comics probably since tynan was writing it yeah yeah to where every issue is like, I don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. Well, and it's really funny you should say it because you enjoyed it when Tynan was writing it, and then there was a time when Tynan was writing Batman, and this book became really crap because of what he was writing in that book, I and know, it became right? like subservient to that. There is so much hilarious push and pull within Batman editorial, and I know some people are like, oh, I hate when Detective and Batman are too autonomous from each other and they feel like they exist in two completely different worlds. I wish they were closer together. Then we get that, and then it's like, oh, well, this book sucks now because it has to play along with whatever the other one is doing. Yeah, it has to follow on and do whatever it was doing in that book, yeah. Yeah, the, the answer to that is is that they both work and they both don't work. It just depends on, you know, what time it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And again, obviously, Tamaki given so much editorial freedom where it's like, yeah, Batman's in a totally other city. Write whatever you want in Gotham. Yeah. And no one's going to step on your toes. Yeah, it was great. Absolutely. All about it. Uh, What else did you have this week, Matt, that you Uh, wanted to cover? I was just saying on Detective Comics, did you read any of the backups in that? I did. I have been reading all the backups. The uh, origin of Nero, the Mm redheaded kid who apparently has been involved with every villain and every <laughs> hero from a very I, young age. I, I, I'm I'm not actively reviewing that because I like read it. I'm like, okay, yeah, nah, fuck this. <laughs> I don't care it's, about Nero. I don't care about him. It's, it's a, well, you see, here's the thing. I have been reading it, and what I like about it is, again, it's building on the theme that is in the main story, and that is how Gotham social services regularly let children down and mm-hmm. what they become. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not all lucky like dick grayson to be adopted by like the richest goodest guy Mm -hmm. so it's basically just nero on a tour of all the social services of gotham from you know hospital to cops to orphanage (laughs) to everything else and like how he just keeps running into fucking super villains like he runs into harley quinn on her first day working at arkham he makes friends with clayface for a minute he actually strikes up a relationship with uh scarecrow and the idea being that the villains are actually treating him nicer than like the people in these places what i what i think should have been like a really cool story was like you do it like so obviously like you do it like the opposite of dick grayson where dick was Mm -hmm. dick was um uh like uh adopted by bruce and everything and became batman had everything and everything so you do something where like 
like say this guy Nero like he gets adopted by like Riddler mm, yeah. and Riddler like like teaches him like like makes him smart teaches him like how to be an intellectual uh enemy to the people and everything and you just do like the opposite where it's like he is it's riddler like training his own robin i mean they, they kind of are doing that with nero where it's like he's learned something from every one of the batman villains that, he's come up against but see that's what i hate because it's not something totally original it's always like oh no. we're gonna we're gonna connect him up to these villains when we don't have to do that it it makes the world smaller where yeah. it's like oh come on he ran into all of them within yeah. like the span of a couple months come yeah on. yeah yeah I mean, Gotham is supposed to be, like, as big as New York. Do you mean to tell me I'm going to run into, like, every affluent New Yorker? Yes. Yes. When I'm there? Absolutely. I mean, I mean the one time I did go to New York, it was New York Comic Con. So, yes, I did <laughs> run into the guys from IGN, and I did run into fucking Max Landis on the street. But, you know. <laughs> ew. I know. Ooh, right? But, hey, that's because everyone was in the city at that time. <laughs> uh, Captain Kuhn helping us out. Uh Kate's become so numb, can't feel anyone there. She's become so tired, yet so much aware. Yes, this is a Lincoln Park joke. Thank you, Kat. I tried really hard not to make a Lincoln Park joke in my video. <laughs> Crawling in this bat skin. Uh, <laughs> These batarang wounds, they never heal. <laughs> uh, did you read the uh, World's Finest back up? Uh, no, because I wanted to save it for when I actually when World's Finest came out. Because I hate when they do that thing where it's like, oh, here's here's a little snippet. Read the whole thing later. I'm like, no, I just want to read the whole thing. I, I took it as like, yeah, it was more. It was like a primer for like what's going to happen in right. that. It's uh, set in the past. Batman and Superman team up to fight uh, Poison Ivy, who is attacking Metropolis. Uh, uh, Metallo shows up, fights I Superman. Did flip through it. It looked yeah. great. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Dan Moore is fucking genius. Killing fucking, it, killing yeah, it. Fight Superman. He injects him with Red Kryptonite, which because it's this isn't Smallville Red Kryptonite. Red Kryptonite in the comics uh, uh, is like radioactive and like morphs Superman's DNA. Right. So we don't know what Superman gets turned into, but it's all being more orchestrated by someone who may or may not be M Magog. Maybe. He has horns. Yeah. Yeah. I only just assume because it's Mark Wade writing it. True enough. Wade fucking loves Magog. Yeah. I was thinking it's either that or it's Trigun. I'm like, who the fuck else has horns? Yeah, yeah. Blue Devil has broken bad. <laughs> He's sick of being a nobody. Yeah, I fucking hate you, Batman and Superman. This is my great plan. <laughs> no, Blue Devil, you're our friend. Well, you're not really our friend, but you're our fellow. Well, you're not no. even really our teammate either. <laughs> no, no, the heroes would be like, who is this guy? Yeah, <laughs> who fuck are you? you? <laughs> I'm Blue Devil. <laughs> Uh, I guess we can do some Marvel stuff. Uh, I had Amazing Spider-Man 87. Uh, I'm two issues behind. Uh, this is a Peter Parker-focused issue. This is all about Black Cat and Captain America taking over his super rehab to try and get him back into fighting shape. Nice. I just I just read that issue where Captain America turned up and fucking beamed Peter in the face of the shield. <laughs> This is, this is the continuation of that. They're both worried about him. They're like, look, he's throwing himself into the field too soon. His body really atrophied in that coma. He almost mm -hmm. got killed by two carjackers. Yep. And we know because he's such a good guy, whenever there is going to be someone in need, he's going to rush in to try and help them, even if it gets them killed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously, you know, a lot of his problems are psychosomatic is the thing, because, you know, mm -hmm. he's grappling with, you know, being out as Spider-Man for so long. Yep. So that's a whole thing. And then they deal with Ben, who we found out beyond has actually been editing his fucking memories. I fucking knew it. Yep, they've been editing his memories and been fucking with his brain this whole time to try and make him a more pliable Spider-Man. Uh, Kafka wasn't involved, actually. Kafka was trying to help him. I did see that panel, yeah. Kafka was trying to help him, and Maxine Danger, like, basically locks her in prison, and it's like, yo, you're a clone. The real Kafka died years ago, so we basically own you and can do whatever the hell we want. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that's really dark and actually begs a lot of questions about, you know, friggin' clone rights and autonomy and everything. Yeah, yeah. When you're legally dead, and, uh, like, Ben passes all of their tests except for the very final test, when he doesn't know with great power comes great responsibility because that memory has eroded in his mind. Oh, no. Pretty important to Spider-Man, right? Uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. 
clone or not. So you have a Spider-Man running around now that doesn't know with great power comes great responsibility. That would also kind of answer the question of like, because um, it never was never, at least to me, I haven't read about it yet. It might have been an issue I haven't read yet. When he uh, when he went and attacked the UFOs after they they uh, hurt Peter, how he, he, he it, it was like implied that he killed them. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, they didn't because in the yeah, Doc yeah. Ock book they were yeah. fine and in prison. But, yeah, you're right. It did look like he at least tried to kill them. Yeah, so, again, that's probably something that, like, was removed from his mind by Beyond when they sent him after them. It, it's also, like, it's convenient writing, but it's like, okay, so this is why Ben doesn't remember anything else that's happened to him. This is why he doesn't remember being the Jackal or his whole villain phase because they literally wiped it from his mind because they thought it was too much baggage for him. Oh, damn. <clears throat> yeah, I know, right? I'm like, okay, so you literally hit the retcon switch in his brain. <laughs> that, that that's pretty cool. I, it's good. It sounds like these last couple of issues have been uh, pretty decent because I'm I just I just uh, got through the the two Salad and a Med books and I'm like, uh, uh, not talking with each other, writers, you know. <laughs> yeah, those th those are hard to get over, and then the Doc Ock ones are hard to mm -hmm. get over because it's like, oh, you all have your own ideas about yeah. what's going on, don't you? You you did so good for the first like ten issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, so this this one was good and interesting, and I I like the idea of Spider Man needing to train to be the very best, like no one ever was. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you don't see it with him. So much of it is like ah, you know, he learned on the job and everything. And the best thing is as well, like you can do it with a character like Ben, but you like if you were to do something like this with Peter, uh, fucking fans would go fucking ballistic. Oh, of course they would. Of course they would. Yeah. Uh, what else did you have, Matt? Uh, I had Iron Man issue sixteen. Oh yeah, yeah. This uh, this is coming to an end, isn't it? Soon, this is like reaching the end of its big Korvac saga. Uh, the the Korvac saga is ending. I don't think the book is ending. Oh really? Yeah, because the Korvac saga is nineteen parts. Mm -hmm. It's fucking massive. Uh, but yeah, this issue, the Cosmic Iron Man, Tony Stark with the power cosmic returns to Earth, mm -hmm. um, and he's he's got some big ideas because he uh, he he knew Korvac was right about wanting harmony in the galaxy and wanting to help people with the power cosmic. Right, he right. just went wrong about it because he, he, he let his own hubris and arrogance get in the way. And his, he thought he was the best and he was the only one who could have some sort of like autonomy. Tony doesn't believe any of that. Um, no, of course the, not. the, the Avengers and everything have been alerted by James and Hellcat and all those guys about what's happening. So they like turn up and be like, Hey, maybe give us that power and you know stop you know pretending to be a god and everything and <laughs> pretty please um t tony tells him his plan and his plan is what he plan what he's going to do is he's going to share his intellect with everyone in the world so everyone in oh. new york now has stark level intelligence oh that's clever yeah. uh thank you functorial for helping us out there the black cat mj tie-in that came out this week broke twitter <laughs> yes. so many viral screen screenshots of mj's dump truck ass and peter saying yeah. please be gentle so i flipped through that book i'm like do i need to read this for spider-man this week okay no i don't ha 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 that's funny <laughs> uh, i saw that that was pretty funny that was Dumps pretty like funny. a truck 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 <laughs> <laughs> baby do it again <laughs> Um, yes continue yeah so everyone's got stark level intellect now reed richards thinks he's now dumber <laughs> <laughs> because of it um but uh what and what that does we get a glimpse of what that does so like people um start like uh, like couples don't fight anymore because they realize that that that's like inconsequential to what they'll do in life and uh there's a guy who's he's gone to the mechanic for like an oil change and the mechanic's like i could convert this to a hydrogen fuel cell and make the car fly and the guy's like yeah just just give me an oil change you know <laughs> fucking kids playing baseball talking about like how it's a consequential their life is in the grand scheme of the universe and all that sort of stuff ball. uh and then we get to the villain big wheel um oh shit who uh who's who was in a coma and he woke up from a coma with a grand idea and decides to try and implement that and uh hellcat and tony find him rampaging through the streets and they go and stop him because he's a villain um and they find out that he actually wasn't hurting anyone and what he was doing was he was like shooting cars with a laser and he was ch he was reprogramming them on a cellular level so that uh gridlock and like traffic jams no longer are a thing 
that's fucking amazing because that's what his power allows him yeah. to do to manipulate and control yeah. me. Oh my God, he could have <laughs> saved the world if yeah. he wanted yeah. to. Yeah, Tony's like, this is fucking groundbreaking. The, you know, he wasn't being a bad guy or anything. And Hel- Hellcat's uh, really upset because Tony, while he had the best intentions, he still fell into that pit that Korvac fell into, which was he gave everyone Stark level intelligence, but with that became came Stark attitudes where like big wheel did this didn't ask anyone if they wanted it he just did it because he could which is something tony stark does (laughs) absolutely i do kind of like the idea there where they're saying that you know intelligence is inherently good where stupidity is inherently evil but you're right it all comes down to attitude and arrogance (laughs) and tony shows where he's always rubbing up against people because of his arrogance even if Mm -hmm. he is a futurist and trying to save the world yeah yeah um, and we find out as well as that since Tony's gotten this power, he's he's gotten kind of a short temper because uh, now because he's got this he's got like heightened intelligence and he's basically cosmic awareness. Everyone's like simple-minded fools to him and it's like mm. always frustrating and everything. So Hellcat, and he, he's viewing people as like customers right. for his power and everything, which is not what uh, Hellcat likes. So Hellcat yeah. Hellcat turns to Doctor Doom for help. Um, <laughs> Because Doctor Doom is uh, um, seemingly the only person who can stop this, because he wasn't in New York when it happened, and he doesn't have the Stark intelligence, and right. he, he he was Iron Man at one point. He um, was. Uh, so he plans on bringing the Iron God back to Iron Man. Mm, and 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 and, and and I imagine it will tie into because uh, Christopher Cantwell wrote that Doctor Doom book. That's right. Yeah, I kept meaning to yeah. check that out too. But yeah, that's right. Of course, because he writes both. Yeah, so I, I imagine next issue we'll also see more of like what has happened to New York now that everyone is a Stark level genius. Now that's funny too. Tony's been out in space this whole time. I wonder if that explains something from Devil's Reign that didn't make any sense to me this week. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. I I know how it makes sense. All right, do we want to talk about Devil's Reign then? Yes. All right, so Devil's Reign continuing going on. Uh, <clears throat> Fisk and his hostile takeover of New York and the Thunderbolts and everything, you know, battering against the heroes. They're running Luke Cage to try and unseat him in the mayatorial race. And uh, I-, I love that uh, Luke's lawyer is foggy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's not, I'm glad. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a Daredevil event, right? So obviously Daredevil supporting characters should have, you know, marquee uh, placements there. Even Kristen gets a great scene yeah. where she goes to see Sue Richards in jail. Yeah, those two are, like, basically running the whole, like, uh, defense for the superhuman community, and they're representing yeah. them all. They bring up a very interesting idea, and they say, look, you know, Fisk's law only affects New York right now. <clears throat> But it's having ripple effects. You know, if, if we don't unseat Fisk and this new, like, anti-superhero law stays, all the other states in America are getting super scared right now that they may have, like, a superhero refugee crisis mm-hmm. and they might have heroes and villains flooding into their states. Yeah, yeah, I think that, that's quite interesting. Yeah, and then that would, it would make the law federal law absolutely because yeah the the way they say it is like you know your most average people like dude who lives in fucking iowa thinks that you know superheroes and supervillains is just a new york problem and yeah. mostly it is yeah yeah mostly with these big cities and everything uh, yeah bumfuck no I- iowa doesn't have to deal with thor or iron man or anything no and they fear that you know if they aren't able to nip this thing in the bud and soon it could mean the return of the superhero registration act and shit yeah and then and on top of that we've got people like uh she hulk who's like eh, fisk makes some good points again fucking she i love she hulk's got a show coming up we're supposed to like her and they remind us that oh yeah not only does she hulk have a bad take on this she hulk was also pro registration during yeah. civil war yeah. and, and to be fair she, like what she says kind of makes sense where it's like well if the if this law keeps up it means that the villains will go into hiding and we would stop becoming targets uh, except for all the villains that are actively working for fisk right now jen as the jackbooted thugs did you miss that part <laughs> Did you miss the fact that the Thunderbolt villains are doing yeah. more damage now and doing it yeah. with a fucking bad? Daredevil basically says, I'm blind and even I can fucking see this is bad. Yeah, <laughs> which is funny too because that's like two lawyers on two different sides of yeah. a you know, law debate. Yeah, yeah. 
And it's, you know, it's great, too, because Daredevil's like, all right, fuck, then, you know, we, uh, Luke is doing everything he can. He should be winning, but Fisk is clearly ahead in the polls, and that's because he's using the purple man's power. Yeah, and uh, Jennifer, um, she, uh, Jessica, sorry, uh, she senses, because she's had, obviously, a connection to uh, yep. Kilgrave, she senses that he's somehow part of this and realizes that Fisk is manipulating the votes. Yep. and um so they need to so and then matt just he like snaps and's like right we've got to fucking take care of him now we've got to fucking do it now, right yeah. now. It, fuck it doing it the legal way <laughs> yeah it won't be popular it won't make us any friends but if we don't stop it now we're going to be dealing with fucking president fist soon yeah. and we can't let that happen yeah uh speaking of the purple children we actually get to see what they're up to right now the thunderbolts are hunting them all over the city because Kingpin now knows via Kilgrave that they're the only ones with the power to basically stop him. Yeah, uh, yeah, and he he um, figures out that if it wasn't Kilgrave who fucked with his memory, because Kilgrave also had his memory fucked with, yes. uh, it was his children. So it has to have been the did. ones who fucked him and made him forget uh, Matt Murdock is Daredevil, so he wants I, them for I that. I love all that callback to Charles Souls. It's so good. It's so good. Purple Children was probably one of his best stories, and I love that Zdarsky is running with it here. And also, adding a lot of character to the Purple Children, too. They're like, well, we don't want to mess with people's minds like our father do, but mm -hmm. we've had to do it to survive, and, you know, we're very conflicted about the whole thing. Yeah, it's when they meet a, uh, an old lady who offers them help. They don't use their powers because she offered them help, and they, they want to stop using their powers to force people to help them and want, want to do things just the normal way. It's nice. I like that. Yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. And uh, I, I was really not expecting Doc Ock and the Superior Four to get as much play <laughs> in this story as they do. But, you know, Matt and his guys are like, okay, we're here at City Hall. We're ready to fuck up Fist. Oh, no, uh, Ock and his guys are here. Are you protecting him? No, we came to kill him ourselves, actually, because we, we hate being under his thumb. And we think we should totally be the rulers of New York. Yeah, and it's here that Ock reveals that the heroes kind of fucked up his plan, because as we find out, Iron Man isn't actually Iron Man, and Iron Man is Chameleon, and Chameleon was installed into the hero's uh, ranks as Iron Man by Ock as sort of their, um, proxy. their proxy, his puppet uh, candidate, as they will, but the heroes decided to go with Luke. Which makes a lot of Tony's weirder behavior in the last couple yeah. of issues make so much more sense now, right? Yeah, yeah. Like when he totally like shat the bed dealing with those kids and yep. everything else. I'm like, okay, because it wasn't him. It was Chameleon pretending to be Tony. Yeah, and Chameleon thought that, oh, well, Tony Stark will just offer people money and that will work because yeah. Tony Stark is a rich person, even yeah, though he's, he's not rich asshole. at the moment. No, exactly. So he got that wrong. And also, is my big question was like, well, if that wasn't Tony, then where the hell has Tony been this whole time? Well, according to you, he's been in space. Yeah, he's been in space fighting Korvac. Well, hot damn. There you go. Good good on you, Zadarsky, for connecting all these dots. Yeah. I appreciate that. Now, now do it with Spider-Man, because the book seems like it couldn't make up its mind if that was <laughs> Ben or Peter. Obviously, Ben knows the Human Torch, but they shouldn't know that he's Spider-Man right now, because the Beyond Corporation in that book is trying really hard to obfuscate who's in the suit at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> You could you could argue that Johnny thought it might have been Peter because Ben Ben was like seriously beaten up and like True. face all puffy. He probably could have thought, oh, it is Peter. It's just, he's just all bloody and shit. It's it's the hair, man. I, I <laughs> like they could have gotten away with it with one line with thing being like, hey, Pete, you're doing something different with your hair these days. <laughs> And also the fact that the costumes are a little bit different, <clears throat> but I don't expect Johnny or Thing to know that. No. Nah. For them, it's like, yeah, we change our costumes all the time. Yeah. But yeah, Devil's Devil's Reign continues to be cool. Lots of interesting directions. You yeah. Know, Will, uh, Zdarsky connecting a bunch of dots. Yeah, and it's, it's moving at a nice pace. It sure is. Three issues in, and I'm like, oh, okay, they've already tried to just go and beat Kingpin up, and that yeah. didn't work. I ate. Yeah, that's cool. And and again, you got the conflict with all the heroes. It, it feels like like civil war if civil war was more than just heroes fighting heroes and flashy action sequences was what it was it was it, it's the thinking man civil war <laughs> exactly they're not all just yelling at each other yeah that's just how malar deals with his problems yeah, in yeah. his stories yeah my characters are loud and angry all the time <laughs> 24 7 365 <laughs> 
uh, Captain Kuhn helping us out again. Daredevil, we have to kill Fisk. Punisher, hey, you guys planning some murder? Can I join? I don't have a book right now and need something to do other than knit. Here, I needed you a sweater. Does it have a skull on it, Frank? You know it does. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a daredevil skull. It's got little horns on it. Isn't it fucking cool? <laughs> yeah, it's just Frank in the cover. Like, hey, guys, can I come out? No, no you stay in there until real-life white power groups stop uh, using your symbol. Shit. Do you reckon it will appear at the end of this series? I mean, honestly, I would... I mean, yeah, I think he will, actually, because I think Zdarsky... Cause, well, because Punisher was at the beginning of the run. Yeah, 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 in Zdarsky stuff. But, yeah, I... I, I, I didn't know whether he would but i guess like he probably would because like um the stuff electra is doing with the hand and stuff to, well should mm. it has to tie in because he's like leading the hand now or something or will be in his new yeah. book so yeah that would be a great place to start yeah it depends how much does zadarsky like aaron's work and vice versa <laughs> for punisher just comes in and fucking kills fisk and leaves I did it, bye. <laughs> and the hand are watching, and we're like, we thought that was super fucking cool what you did. Do you want to be our new dad? And Punisher's like, yes, I'll be your new dad. <laughs> my last family all got murdered, yeah. so let's not go for picnics in the yeah, bar. I, I'll forgive you for digging up my family. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, oh my God, they did that not long ago, didn't they? Yeah, fuck? yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the, those were different ninjas. You killed all of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're the new, kinder, gentler hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. But yeah, D Devil's Reign is good. I like Devil's Reign. It's really fucking good. And also, we know that Zadarsky and Chichetto aren't done on this. They're going to be oh. getting a new number one when this yeah. is all done. Yeah, that's what re that really surprised me. I thought we were just going to go back into you know whatever daredevil number it was. Us. But I guess that makes sense, because you got this event, and then you get new number one to get the new readers on same and also this really felt like a grand conclusion didn't it yeah well it got a conclusion to part one or something i guess yeah but yeah you're right i felt that on the book as well where it's like oh surely we must be entering the end game now and zadarsky's like nope still going <laughs> yeah fisk actually wins like the presidency so now like oh my daredevil's got to go to like washington dc and fight him there yeah, in the reflecting yeah. pond they wrestle in the reflecting pond <laughs> he impales him on the washington monument they're, somehow they're, they're fighting up the like lincoln memorial and stuff oh and... <laughs> uh, yeah uh, i found out you can actually get arrested for climbing the lincoln memorial there uh friggin what is it steve-o from jackass tried to do that and they almost arrested him oh fuck <laughs> Uh, the cop was nice. The cop was like, look, okay, I know you're Steve-O. I know what you do. I'm going to let you off with a warning. But don't you dare upload any of that footage. If you do, I swear to God, I will put out a federal warrant on you. And that's, like, real shit. Uh, that's what he's going to do at the end of the next Jackass film. Like, I'm going to upload this footage and go on the run. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's my new show, Steve-O on the run. Steve-O is just in a white Ford Bronco fucking speeding down the highway. <laughs> Man, I really want to see the new Jackass movie. Why does it have to be in theaters during fucking Omicron? Why can't it just go to streaming? I'm not too crazy on it just because it's a bunch of, like, YouTubers. Older Jackass. Yeah. It's the older Jackasses. Though I do kind of have to respect them for being like, okay, guys, we're getting too old now. We need Jackass the next generation. <laughs> We need to start getting our sidekicks, and, you know, because it's 2022, you know, here, you know, black people can be jackasses, too, and women as well, and we got another fat guy. <laughs> See, you know, we're slightly different now. We couldn't get Bam Majera back, because, unfortunately, he's still fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, he's a fucking weirdo now. Yeah, he's too much for us. <laughs> he's too much of a jackass for the other jackasses. <laughs> Yeah, which, that was another thing about it, where it's like, oh, I'm excited for that movie. Nah, with Bam not there, though, it's not the whole set. This is always going to be the one that you'll look back and be like, ah, they weren't all together. Yeah, well, I guess they'd never really all be together, because fucking, what's his name? Dunn is dead. Yeah, yeah, he fucking died, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, so it is always going to be a little weird. But, you know, say la vie. Yeah. Uh, oh, we had uh, another big Marvel book this week, and that was X Deaths of Wolverine. Did you read this? I haven't read this one yet. I read the, the Life book, the, the cool fucking time travel Terminator book. Okay, you know, I'm going to try to not spoil a lot of this then because <laughs> the shit goes down in this issue. Okay. Are they connected? Are the bo both uh, books connected? Yes. Yes, okay. they are. Cool. 
So, obviously, like you said, X lives of Wolverine is fucking Terminator with Wolverine. He needs to save Xavier throughout history. Yeah. That's nice and simple and to the point, right? A little repetitive, obviously. We've seen that in X-Men, but just because it's, you know, been done before doesn't mean it still can't be good. Mm Mm-hmm. I like that Omega Red is the bad guy again, kind of getting his wins back after X-Force has been shitting on him for, like, two years. Yeah, and he's got some weird fucking possessed power where he can, like, possess yeah. people and everything now. Well, clearly it's because, you know, uh, what is it, Mikhail Rasputin has taken control of the Russian government and has been using the <laughs> Cerebro Sword. Yeah, remember that? The fucking Cerebro Sword? We thought they dropped that story yeah. to basically do everything that Krakoa can do now. Yep. And that's pretty dope. So that's that story, and that's all well and good. So I dig into X Deaths of Wolverine, and I'm like, okay, what's Wolverine going to be doing next? Uh, X Deaths of Wolverine is not about Wolverine, Matt. Try and guess who it's about. Uh, it's about, I don't know, another Wolverine? Like like Laura? Uh, it is about Moira. Oh, ooh, okay. It literally picks up with Moira seconds after Cypher kicks her through the portal. Oh, fuck yeah. I know. I'm like, oh my god, this is a continuation to Inferno? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and the idea they have for Moira is fucking genius, where Moira is like, okay, I've been deposed. I'm depowered. They dropped me back off in Scotland, where I haven't lived for <clears> decades. <throat> and uh, Mystique is going to come and kill me, because they saved me today, but Mystique doesn't follow the rules. She's just going to hunt me down and kill me. Mm-hmm. And because I'm not a mutant anymore, when I die, I'm going to stay dead this time. Okay. And also, oh no, I have blood cancer. Fuck. (laughs) Oh no. I have blood cancer, and Moira reaches out to her friend, Jane Foster. Okay. Apparently they're friends, I know, right? That begs a lot of questions, where it's like, but wait, didn't didn't people think she was dead, and don't people think she's not a mutant? Isn't that the whole point of why no one was looking for her? It's a whole fucking thing. But yeah, Mystique shows up like the Terminator, like, I'm gonna fucking kill you, Moira! (laughs) (laughs) Did you really think you could stop me? And uh, Moira ends up getting recognized by the CIA's ex-desk, who have been villains in the Wolverine book up until this point. And they snap a picture of Moira, and they're like, oh, shit, we haven't seen Moira McTaggart for, like, years. If we're only seeing her now, she must have either been a prisoner of Krakoa or some sort of expat. We should probably capture her and, you know, torture her for information. Okay. So you got Moira dying of a disease... Hunted by Mystique who wants to kill her and hunted by the CIA who want to capture her. Oh, that's so cool. So it's basically her just doing the fucking born identity, running from everyone. And her thing's like, no, I didn't live all those other lives just to fucking die now. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. And I'm and I'm not going to give up my stranglehold <clears throat> on Krakoa just because I lost my power. This is like all because of me. <laughs> And uh, as the comic ends, you know, we see Gene and we see Charles doing their mind whammy on Wolverine so he can, like, astral project himself. Mm. And Gene's like, hey, I heard something. Hey, why am I hearing Wolverine's thoughts over here? Oh, fuck, it's Wolverine of the future and he has warlock claws. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah, that's bad because Moira also has a warlock arm. Yes, yes, she got that at the end of Inferno. Yeah, so a lot is going on in this book. Oh, man. So, oh... That, that, like, implies that the stuff with, like, the robots and, like, the, the, the hybrid mutant mm-hmm. ro- machine things happen. And, oh, yeah. oh, oh. And that the future gets very fucky and also, Fuck like, yeah. yeah, Moira still has a part to play. Hell yeah. <laughs> Which, again, because I assume when that Hickman story was done, I'm like, well, I guess we're not going to see Moira yeah. again. Yeah, or at least not for a while. Yeah, and Benjamin Percy's like, no, we got so much stuff left. <laughs> heavy asking how did she get cancer how does anyone get cancer (laughs) it's a thing that happened they didn't wash their ass they didn't wash their ass that's how you get the cancer always be washing your ass kids (laughs) you don't want an infection in your booty hole is all we're saying but yeah that uh that book is cool totally going places i was not expecting i thought it's like hey you know this is gonna be like a low-key fucking wolverine story that's fine whatever you know yeah i thought it was just gonna be like i guess in a way it is a companion piece to that uh x lives where we're gonna see like the other side of the story or something yeah it's gonna be something like that it certainly seems to be that's the direction they're going in it yeah yeah fuck yeah yeah so yeah if you've been sleeping on x lives and x deaths because you thought meh this is gonna be a wolverine thing i don't need to check it out Uh, apparently you do yeah god damn 
Uh, Eric helping us out again. Love the Marauders annual. Fun new team and makes uh, fun of readers who don't understand why mutants don't want to assimilate with people who hate and fear them. <laughs> yeah, I heard great things about that one, too. I, I never got to finish the last Marauders <coughs> run, so I felt bad picking up the new one, even though I loved Marauders so much and now that I've fallen behind. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, maybe I should just jump in on the new writer and the new team because it starts with the annual. And then I'm like, well, I'm whittling down my X-Men, and I know they're going to be coming out with more X-Men I've got to read. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, man. There's so much great X-Men out right now. I know. It, it just it makes like not reading or like having to cut them just so so bad like 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 i caught up on uh, on sword recently and i'm so glad i did because that book holy shit i need more hours in the day is what it is i need yeah. more hours in the day to read comics i really do <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh now i think that's about it for me did you have anything else i had two more books all right let's hear them uh i had avengers forever issue two oh yeah this is still going on i i dropped out on that yeah this is uh this is completely focused on robbie reyes this issue uh, oh, a, a, as he is tortured by the black skull oh that seems bad <laughs> um he's tortured he's been taken to the black skull's earth which is just like it's like a hydra wasteland that he owns he lives in like a big fucking german castle um, sounds about right castle wolfenstein <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, he's torturing robbie because he doesn't know who this ghost rider is like he doesn't know like who robbie reyes is but he knows that this ghost rider isn't like danny ketch it isn't uh johnny blaze naomi kale any of them it's someone else and he doesn't know who it is but he wants to know but but robbie never gives up who he is and that's the problem because he's he's still ghost rider at the moment and the minute he 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 stops losing control and turns back to robbie reyes he'll die from his wounds oh that's but if bad. he but if he stays as ghost rider uh the spirit of vengeance will burn away his identity and he'll forget who he is that's really bad yeah uh to stop that from happening the the death lock that he was with he got caught with uh is in his cell and is uh he keeps te he keeps telling him stories of robbie reyes and like who robbie reyes is and everything but it, uh, because of, because of what's happening with Robbie and him having to stay with um, stay as the Ghost Rider, he begin, begins thinking those are legends of a mm. of, of a Ghost Rider called Robbie Reyes, the All Rider, uh, oh. who, who who apparently save Infinity, um, which is I think a hint at what's happening gonna be happening in Judgment Day because Robbie Reyes is going to be right. very important in that because the Eternals don't like that he can talk to a Celestial that's right yeah i forgot that was a whole thing that aaron had started that mm -hmm. he was the one who could talk to it yeah and he, he rose it from the dead yeah oh yeah that's right yeah, yeah. he freaking got inside it and everything and freaking drove it uh yeah so black skull is trying to determine who this guy is because and as well as like he's the only ghost rider they've ever found across the multitude of worlds they've destroyed who has a hell charger and can actually uh possess a car and not a motorbike or a horse or something mm -hmm. um and we learn that uh the ghost rider the, the norman osborne ghost rider the the green goblin guy the ghost goblin mm. um he's been trying to find out who this guy is as well and eventually they actually find out who he is find out who robbie reyes is and what they do is they actually end up capturing every single robbie reyes in the multiverse <laughs> and uh putting them in a room together and basically forcing them to kill each other uh, and we find out that the Robbie Reyes from Earth 616 is the only Robbie Reyes who ever becomes Ghost Rider. Every really? other one is every other one is just like a nobody. And, That's and they, very interesting. They like uh, Black Skull uses it to like fuck with his mind. It's like you're not special in the multiverse at all. Like you're a fucking fluke. You, every other life you've ever lived is just meaningless. And he he has all the all the robbies kill him until only the earth 616 is left alive and that that's what oh, no. that's what finally breaks robbie because he realizes that like he's the only one left and what he saw his counterparts do to each other like fucking broke his mind i fucking guess <laughs> so now he's the only robbie that exists in the entirety of the multiverse that's what it's, it it implies yeah that's fucking nuts. That's that, that's almost like what DC is doing with uh, like Captain Multiverse and Dark Side. You know, we are yeah. higher beings because we're the only versions of ourselves that exist. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Yeah, and then then the issue ends with uh, the Ant Man, the Invincible Ant Man, Tony Stark of that world, trying <laughs> to trying to free uh, the broken Robbie and Deathlock. 
That's nuts. That sounds heavy. Yeah, yeah. Is Aaron writing that? Is that Aaron? Yeah, that's Aaron. That's Aaron? All right, I might have to pick this up. That actually sounds kind of like my jam. It's, it's pretty fucking cool. It's def definitely a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I'm like, that sounds really dark, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right on. And what was the last one you had? Uh, the last book I had was Thor issue... What issue was it? It was issue 21. 21? Oh, yeah. yeah, 21 was this week. Shit. I yeah. see I didn't get to that one either. I really wanted to. Yeah, uh, Thor uh, has his shit pushed in by the hammer, Mjolnir. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. Mjolnir is real and walking around yeah. and cursed at him. Yeah, and um, kind of has some pretty good, like, reasons why. Like, the reasons that, like, uh, Thor sees it as an object. And I, I compared mm. it in my review to, like, uh, like, the hammer is, like, an abused wife who has had enough. Yeah. And, it, that way. and is finally getting revenge on it where like thor only saw it as like an object to like use and it was only ever powerful in his hand and mm. that sort of stuff um but that's not the case at all because uh the hammer has a little something extra in it uh you remember back when thor uh jane foster's thor fought mangog and yes threw him into the sun yes i do with the yeah. hammer yeah well, the hammer cracked when that happened, and oh. Magog got inside the hammer. Oh no! And the god of fun, the god of hammers we've been seeing, isn't the hammer; it's Magog. Oh shit! Yeah. God damn! It's always fucking Magog, isn't yeah. it? Always there to fuck with Thor and the Asgardians. Yeah, and he's uh, because because Magog is the uh, it's the embodiment of a race, you know that. Uh, destroyed by the Asgardians that only wants to yeah, kill them. It's taking on the rage and wrath of Mjoln of the uh, the Storm God mm. that's in uh, in Mjolnir as well, and that's why it's so right. uh, intent on revenge against Thor, and why it's destroying Thor's favorite yeah. things, why it destroyed Broxton, Ohio, yeah. and everything. Yeah, Thor ends up he tries to like fight it with the lightning, but obviously it's a being made of lightning, so it can't yeah, do it. Bad idea. He ends up uh, basically blowing his arm off like he he, he punches oh, no. he, he goes to punch the being and it moves the hammer in the way and it just shatters his entire arm and um, not the first time he's lost that arm uh, odin comes to help and odin ends up getting actually crippled uh, oh shit uh, by the hammer and yeah the hammer just just wipes them clean and and yeah it just ends with a reveal that it is actually mangog in the hammer well hot damn yeah Again, Mangog, the original Doomsday, out here doing Doomsday shit. Yeah. There's even this really cool bit where, like, where, like Odin appears to like help his son, and he's got Sif on standby with the the uh, the Bifrost, and she she sends the hammer away to like the farthest reaches of the incalculable universe. Like, mm. there is no math available to like talk about how far away this is. And then on the next panel, the hammer's back back in Broxton, and he's like, well, "How the <laughs> fuck did that happen? What the fuck?" <laughs> god mod man yeah. uh eric helping us out again they can make a team of characters that have no variants like robbie and rachel summers oh yeah they could at this point they're getting more and more <laughs> a new Auk, exiles Auk team make, yeah awk wants to make himself the only version of the himself in the multiverse yeah. so yeah there's something in the water recently yeah hey was that superman robin book this week too it was yeah okay shit then i had one more let's talk about this right quick because i know the chat was asking about it yeah i didn't like it no, I know you didn't. You really didn't like it, which surprised me, because normally you're such a soft lay for well, Superman well, stories. Well, I was hoping it would actually, like, further the fucking relationship between these two characters, who have had a lot, a lot fucking happen since Tomasi took over. But it just went back to, like, what Tomasi was doing in that run, where it's like, remember when he went on adventure with the Helper and and it's everything was always relating back to their parents they, it, they haven't ever had a wholly original villain to fight themselves it, it was a real greatest <laughs> hits wasn't it? it was kind yeah. of a celebration of tomasi's time on this and basically yeah. to me it really read like an attempt at a backdoor <clears throat> pilot to be like look hey even with all the changes and editorial shifts look i could totally keep writing the super sons though i could write superman and robin if you wanted me to well we had that with the adventures of the super sons and that ended because i don't think anyone was actually reading it <laughs> i mean that was a digital book too so and but, I it, mean, but it was confirmed by him against digital books it was confirmed by him as well to be a continuation of that yeah true enough but yeah i just wish like and it, i said in my review you compare it to like what uh 
uh, Superboy and Robin are doing now. Robin's got his own thing with like uh, mm. his book with Williamson and the tournament, and it's got like original characters mixed in with time some legacy travel, stuff yeah. and time travel. Then you got like uh, John, and he's now Superman. He's developing Older his supporting his, cast. Yeah, he's developing his own supporting cast with villains. It's all new. It's all original. It's all really cool stuff. And then you compare it to Tomasi stuff, and all his stories were about they're fighting kid Lex Luthor, they're fighting mm. kid Joker. It's all related tangentially to their parents. Right. And right. that's that's and what I, I would I, I was I was fine with it for like the first two volumes, but it just kept happening. It it is getting to a point where it's like, so you're going to evolve this concept in any yeah. way? Yeah, it never wanted to evolve, and that's what I really hated about it. Right, and I mean, there's certainly I'm sure some people are like, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They're just fun little adventures and everything. But yeah, it does feel like where they've been through so much. And yes, I know this issue takes place between like issue one and two of Son of Kal El and everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It also felt like there was like some meta reading going on there with John being all depressed about his new Superman mantle. So he's eating cereal for dinner and watching <laughs> cartoons. And his mom's like, don't you want to watch the news or do anything adult? And it's like, no, I'm still fucking 10 years old in my mind, for Christ's sake. I just got, see, you know, aged up to 18. See, that 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 stuff I, I really liked. I'm like, OK, he's, he's getting into this now. But then it just felt stops. Like something. Then it just stops. And it's like, ah, Robin's I, here. Adventure. Help at. Remember all I, this stuff? I feel like a lot of writers are afraid to tackle that where it's like, well, is he a child in his mind? And if so, is it wrong that we're treating him like an adult or is, did he grow up, but he's still a child in his heart and soul, man, you know, <laughs> but, like, but aren't I feel we like, old, no, you know, <laughs> but aren't we all, man? Yeah. I feel like writers don't want to give a solid answer to that question. Cause that opens up like a whole fucking Pandora's box. Yeah. Yeah. Because then it's like, well, Superman's a shitty dad then for leaving his 10 <laughs> year old son to defend the earth. And we can't have that. <laughs> So, yeah, I, but yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I enjoyed it more than you did, but I fully admit, yeah, this yeah. is, this didn't do anything yeah. too special. Yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was fun seeing them watch them, you know, beat up Nazis and fucking giant fucking mech armors and stuff like that. But yeah, needed a little bit more substance than that. Yeah. And, you know, playing around with, you know, a, a bat monster, because of course it has to be a bat monster. <laughs> of, course, of course, yes. Of course, it couldn't be anything else there. Also, hey, did they move the fortress back when I wasn't looking? yes like it got re um regrown sort of thing um because the uh the one in the bermuda triangle got destroyed i think it was, was it was a while ago winter thing <clears throat> yeah it happened at the end of endless winter where the fortress got returned yeah it's also kind of funny too to read a story about you know john like woe is me for my lost childhood and everything to someone like Damien and to someone like Bat, it's like, oh yeah, lost childhood. Tell us all about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Batman, I haven't been his child since I saw my fucking parents get shot. At least your parents are still fucking alive. <laughs> and Damien being like, yeah, you know, my mother's a goddamn, you know, killer assassin, and I was trained to kill before I could walk and everything, and I'm still trying to walk that back. Yeah, yeah. You're you're ten years old in your heart and soul, but you can see R-rated movies. <laughs> you can buy beer. You can buy beer. See, that should have been the issue, Damien. Can you buy me beer? Yeah. <laughs> can you buy me beer and illegal firecrackers and everything I can have? <laughs> Alfred checks my pockets, <laughs> or at least he would if he was alive. I guess that joke doesn't track anymore. Yeah, the hypercube, Tevia. We talked about this. The hypercube was destroyed by John right it was it was melted by his heat vision right of course oh, yeah there's uh there, there there goes your cube there goes your time cube which apparently even in adventures of the super sun it like came alive or something i did not yeah. read that part yeah it was uh, possessed by grid or something oh fuck they brought I, grid back oh, yeah I, I can't really remember what exactly happened but yeah it gained like sentience and yeah it was a whole I'll thing i'll tell you my I'll tell you my problem with that digital series and why I think a lot of people didn't stick with it. They do that thing that DC Digitals do. Here's like a very short amount of pages and yeah. the story's not done and you got to come back. It was like, yeah, was, every issue was like five or six pages. Yeah, we took a full 22 issue and cut it up at the worst possible places. Yeah. That's annoying. I didn't like that. And yes, I know they. the whole idea is that they package them and sell them in physical later, but still, it's really hard to keep up with them digitally. Yeah. And I know they're like, well, what do you want to do? Do it the other way where the art's like much quicker and cheaper and shittier. I know it's a double-edged sword and you can't win. 
uh, Functorial helping us out again. Highly recommend Static Season 1. The art is so good. Yes, it is, and now that it's done, I think I can finally sit down and make a whole video about it. Yeah, I've been seeing that most of these Season 1s are starting to end now, so I was going to, like, read them all. I definitely want to read the Rocket and Icon one, because I read the first issue, and it was fantastic. Right. See, I actually remember people having some problems with the Icon and Rocket one, being like, hey, so Reginald Hudlin is just writing Icon as himself, huh? <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's that's he he sees himself in this character when he maybe shouldn't see himself in the character because like rocket is the real hero of icon and rocket by getting <laughs> icon out of his old ways but reginald hudlin's like i don't see a problem with it <laughs> which honestly makes me want to read it more just because of that where i'm like oh my god <clears throat> did reginald hudlin write self-insert fan fiction <laughs> And Icon is now uh, a very important writer in Hollywood, and everyone loves him very much, and he never screwed anybody yeah. over. Ne never did anything bad. No, no. Never did anything like, wrong. Like everyone, everyone else in Hollywood. No one's in Hollywood's yeah. done anything bad. No. Never did anything <laughs> wrong to any. Doesn't have any enemies. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> uh, all right. I guess on that note, we can start winding the show down now that we have officially talked about everything. Yeah. That was that was a long one. This was a monster of a show, everyone. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and listening. We always deeply appreciate it. Matt and I will be back again uh, next week to do it all over again. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, as always. You got anything else to pitch? Uh, not really at the moment. I'm t I'm going to try at some point, depending on my sh uh, work schedule, to do more of my Mass Effect stream to get I've into seen that. get into uh, Mass Effect Two, the the best Mass Effect. I agree very much so. Two is my favorite as well. Yeah. Uh, Eric helping us out again just as we're leaving. Personally, I've always read Damien as asexual, so I would find it interesting to compare their sexualities and bond over their similarities and differences. Yeah, some writers definitely write Damien asexual as a motherfucker. I think Williamson definitely wants him to have more of a girlfriend in Flatline, though. Yeah, I always found it weird that they that some writers do that just because I'm like, hey, he's, he's like, what, a 13-year-old? that's yeah so it's a little it's like a little weird like if he was he 15 was also, or something maybe yeah <laughs> but he was also like raised by assassin monks yeah. and shit so it's like you know push down all your feelings push <laughs> down all external whatever be yeah, only yeah. about the mission yeah yeah it would be very interesting yeah what they were doing with flatline was interesting he's he's kind of like a fucking shonen action hero like i only live <laughs> to fight and fight some more and uh, the shonen uh comparison is apt being that that fucking book is so fucking manga. It's anime as shit, isn't yeah, it? Which, yeah. man, God, did they take the best parts of it and give it to the right character, didn't they? I know, right? It's so good. So good. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Matt and I will be back again. As always, if you're a patron, you get to listen to this episode first before anyone else in audio and eventually video form. For everyone else, it drops Wednesday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, just in time for new comic books. Yeah. So there you go, everyone. Until then, this is Joel from the Comic Multiverse. And Matt from Fortress of Solitude. There you go. We'll be back again next time, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>